This is St. Louis Cardinals baseball. This afternoon, a gorgeous day here in Seattle in Safeco Field. The Cardinals looking to avoid the sweep. It's the St. Louis Cardinals and the Seattle Mariners. And with Al Roboski and Scott Warman, I'm Dan McLaughlin. Delighted to have you with us for Sunday afternoon baseball. The final game of this three-game set. Cardinals looking to avoid the sweep, and they'll turn to Jaime Garcia. Starting pitching is always so important. They set the tone, and Jaime's going to have to come out here, and we should know pretty quick whether he's on. If you start seeing ground ball after ground ball, we know he's on. They're very tough, the Mariners. They've hit the most home runs against left-handed pitching in the major leagues this year. So let's hope, hope Jaime's got the ground ball going. All right, we'll see if that carries over to today. Jaime Garcia gets the call this afternoon afternoon for St. Louis. It's a look at our Budweiser What's on Tap. The lefty is 3 and 1 on the road this season and baseball is coming up. The MLB All-Star Game, July 12th on Fox. Jim Hayes with a Bomberito Sports update. Cubs down in Miami, bottom 7, Christian Yelich, a liner up the middle, one run scores. And the Marlins extend their lead to three to one. Last check, still 3 1 Mariners, bottom of the eighth. Cubs have dropped five of six. Coming up, it's the Cardinals and Mariners. Enjoy the ball game. Greater coverage of Major League Baseball presented by T Mobile. Steven Strasburg put on the DL for Washington. Clayton Kershaw is tied in the National League for wins with 11 with Jake Arrieta and Johnny Cueto. He'll go tonight against a rookie of the Pittsburgh Pirates in Sunday Night Baseball. Albert Pujols, home run in his last two games. He recently passed Harmon Killebrew, 574 career home runs. Number 11 on the all-time list. Beautiful day here in Seattle, and baseball comes your way next. St. Louis Cardinals baseball is brought to you by Bud Light Live. By Chevrolet. Visit your local Mid-America Chevy dealer for great prices on the all-new 2016 Malibu. And by Menards. Save big money at Menards on all your home improvement needs. Beautiful look at Elliott Bay here in Seattle. And here at Safeco Field, the roof is open. Sun is shining brightly. A perfect day for baseball. Let's hope the Cardinals can make it a perfect game for themselves. They need a little help today. Well, the Cardinals have dropped two straight. Right now, 38 and 35 this year, three games above the 500 mark. Seattle with the win last night. They are 38 and 37. And both these teams start play today, 10 games back in their respective divisions. Matt Carpenter leads it off, followed by Aledmus Diaz and Matt Holliday. Then Steven Piscotti, Brandon Moss, Jed Jerko gets the start at third, Tommy Pham, then Colton Wong, and the catcher, Eric Fryer. On the mound, it's a 27-year-old left-hander. Very good in his last start against Detroit. As he pitched into the eighth, he has struck out 34 in just 29 innings of work this year. That's James Paxton. He's had some injuries in the past. It's altered his motion, and they found a better slot for him now. And they say he can hit triple digits. And the first pitch is taken for a ball, and we're underway. He left spring training and he was throwing about 91 miles an hour. But then he changed his arm slot. Instead of straight over the top and throwing downhill, he's more three quarters. Like that. And they said they've rushed it up to 100 miles an hour. But a lot of times people say that he, it doesn't go as fast as you would think. His, his 100 is more like 95. And you can see his Hyundai pitch arsenal right there. A lot of fastballs, a lot of cutters. Followed back by Carpenter. One ball in, two strikes. Something as simple as a finger can complicate the life of a pitcher. Strained his middle finger tendon in late May of last season, then tore a fingernail in his third start back and was shut down for the year. He's dealt with injuries in back-to-back -back seasons. A little check swing and a foul ball. When healthy, he was effective. 12 of his 29 earned runs came in two different starts. So if you take those two out, he had an ERA just over two in his other 11. But he did struggle a little bit with his control. 
three walks per nine a year ago. Yeah, they they say that a uh, couple games have gotten his numbers a little skewed. Many times he's left runners on and they've been scored with a reliever on the mound. But charge to Paxton. And the one two. Take it inside. Calling the balls and strikes today. Carlos Torres. Rob Drake is at first. Sam Holbrook at second. Jerry Davis down at third. After set up away, rarely you will get that call on the inside part of the plate. The 2 2. It seems like he's all arms and legs. He's 6'4, 225. But it looks like, you know, he's just a lot of arms and legs. Throws pretty much in the middle of the rubber. And like all left handers, throws across his body a bit. 3 2 pitch. Carpenter hits it out to deep center. Martinez back at the wall and can't make the play. Matt on his way to second. Now on his way to third. It's a leadoff triple. The fifth triple this year for Matt Carpenter. On base, extra bases, all kinds of things. Matt just climbs the leaderboard in the National League and runs scored. Hopefully he will do that with Diaz at the plate. But... Matt Carpenter definitely at the table setter. The AT&T high speed replay once that ball was down he's off to the races. Nearly caught by Martin in center. Play in front of him. He makes the choice to go to third. It was the right one. And when they bobbled the uh, relay throw over through the initial cutoff man. They guaranteed him get to third base. Last night a led Miss Diaz became just the ninth Cardinal to reach 10 home runs before his 70th major league game. Now has 10 this year. And it's two balls and no strikes. See defensively they're conceding the run. A lot of times you start playing the infield in trying to play for that one run. You're setting yourself up for a crooked number. Led miss very good on the road one of the top averages in all the baseball away from home checks in at the start of play today at 355 good road trip to 412 with two home runs the 2 1 driven out to right center that's well hit Martin can't get to him. one hops over the wall ground rule double led miss Diaz and a one nothing St. Louis lead. Well, we always talk about on the West Coast how at nighttime, a little cooler air, the ball gets knocked down a bit. But during the day, the ball will fly. Good examples for the first two hitters. A triple by Carpenter. Now Diaz with a ground rule double. And of course, our keys to the game, Toyota keys to the game, get a lead and add on. Cardinals really last night couldn't overcome the five runs they gave up in the first two innings lost five four but just keep on punishing holiday picked up the first RBI in the game last night bases loaded single that point made it five to one the Diaz hit a three run homer to make it five to four and that was the final he is one home run shy of 150 in his Cardinals uniform be the 12th Cardinal with 150 home runs Overall with 13 this year and he's driven in 42. A lot of room on the right side Cano trying to keep Diaz close at second base and the 0 2 struck him out holiday strikes out for the 46th time this year. Defensively, O'Malley is in left. Martin is in center. Gutierrez, normally a DH or comes off the bench, he gets a start today in right. Seeger, Marte, Cano, and Lee along the infield, and Chris Ionetta is behind the plate. Around the horn, presented by Dobbs. She get a look at Scott Service, manager here with the Mariners. Here's Steven Piscotti hitting 468 with runners in scoring position. 
And you think back to last night, a key play in the game, bases loaded after the single by Holiday. Piscotti hit a screamer right to Robinson Cano, and that ball was caught. The threat was through. Cardinals had a couple of chances to tack on and just couldn't do it. Steven has been very good against left-handed pitching this year. One of the top hitters in all the baseball against the Southpaws at 381 with an average. And the Cardinals as a whole are not very good at hitting left-handed pitching. And the one thing about Paxton, we saw it with Holiday's a bat and not afraid to work inside to the right-handed batters. One ball and two strikes on the Cardinals right fielder. Cardinals have been playing in very tight games. Seven of the last eight have been decided by just one run. And St. Louis has won only two of those. That's tough. And last year they were so good in close games. Scotty held up, evens it up at two and two. So there it is, starting with Texas. And then the sweep at Chicago and the Cardinals have dropped the first two here in Seattle. On to Kansas City first of four tomorrow two in Kansas City and then two in St. Louis. The two two. Strikes out Piscotti. Get a pretty good idea of this velocity of the fastball to throw two right by Holiday and Piscotti back to back at bats. Ball up is always tough to catch up to. Moss is two for two and a home run off of Paxton. Paxton did face the Cardinals one time back in 2013 in St. Louis and pitched six shutout innings. Slugging percentage this month for Brandon Moss is an eye popping 821. That is the highest slugging percentage of anybody in all the Major League Baseball here in the month of June. Talked with Matt Adams today. He was available to pinch hit last night. Was in the starting lineup, then a late scratch on Friday night with a sore back. So Moss played that night. Had a couple of doubles as he moved to first base. There's a look at Matt, who is available to pinch hit today. It's unfortunate with the DH. You want to get him some at bats, you want to get him rolling, but with the sore back, he could not play. I know Holiday DHing, you know, it's been a, almost a half day off, not having to play in the field, but. I thought he could have used a rest so you're right would have been a golden opportunity to get another left handed bat in there. The two one misses low three balls one strike on Brandon Moss Jed Jerko is filling in for Johnny Peralta today is on deck. Inning started with a triple by Carpenter, opposite field double by Diaz and an RBI, then back to back strikeouts. And now a walk. 21st walk for Brandon Moss this year, and it brings in Jerko, who again before the game today was talking about those affected with the flooding in West Virginia, Morgantown, the home of the Mountaineers, and Mentioned last night the PGA has canceled the Greenbrier Classic. That was their next stop on tour. Our thoughts are with those folks and with many of the family and friends of Jed Jerko. Runners at first and second. Two outs here in the top of the first. And that pitch is in the dirt. Odd road to the big leagues for James Paxton. He was drafted 37th overall by the Blue Jays in 2009. Did not sign. NCAA ruled that he was ineligible stemming from his contact with agent Scott Boris. Now you can have an advisor but not an agent. So he could not pitch his senior year. As Jerko skies one into center shading from the sun Martin. 
And he makes the catch. We had a battle of the sun. A beautiful day here in Seattle. Cardinals pick up a run. Al mentioned in the open, this is a Mariners club that hits for a lot of power. Marte will lead it off, followed by Gutierrez. And then Robinson Cano with 19 home runs. Nelson Cruz serves as the DH. Kyle Seeger, Dehe Low, Chris Iannetta, Martin, and O'Malley. Starting nine for the Mariners against Jaime Garcia. Last pitched on Monday at Wrigley Field, gave up two runs in six and two thirds. And that was a win against the Chicago Cubs. Always oh, seems like he loves pitching during the day. Pitch well on the road this year. He's got a lead. Now keep it. One to nothing Cardinals on back to back extra base hits. And a strike to Cattell Marte, switch hitting shortstop. Now time is called. You watch before games, the Mariners, when they're playing catch, just getting loose. He's always playing catch with Robinson Cano. That was his favorite player growing up. The single into center field. Marte with eight stolen bases this year. There's a look at Colton Wong. He's in left field. Tommy Pham in center. Piscotti is in right. Jerko, Diaz, Carpenter, and Moss on the infield. Fryer is behind the plate. Cardinals have committed just eight errors here in the month of June. Third fewest in all the baseball. And it's important to note that Garcia is a ground ball pitcher. 58% of what he gets in play are on the ground. So the Cardinals defense has to be ready to go today. And then that's why we talk about if he's getting his ground balls, you know he's going to have a good game. Usually when he keeps the ball down, you know, he has good movement on it. Very tough to center the baseball and let's see St. Louis, the fewest errors there are amongst the teams in, in June, but they led the major leagues in errors in April and May, so good turnaround. Here's a 1-0 pitch to Franklin Gutierrez. Instead of check on the runner Marte. Yadier Molina the day off. Eric Fryer is behind the plate. He has caught four of six base stealers against him this year. He's done a really nice job. Got a lot of power against left-handed pitching. The Mariners lead the major leagues with home runs against left-handed pitching. Well, granted that Mike Leake wasn't sharp last night. A lot of hard hit balls. But if a couple of plays are made behind him, most notable was the ball that was hit to Johnny Peralta at third. Could have been an any ending double play and then maybe a different line for Mike Leake last night. His shortest outing as a Cardinal so far. And not only that play, but a couple of them where the defense betrayed him you know, with shifts. The 2 0. Two balls and one strike. Pitching staff saw their quality streak snapped at 13 in a row. Leak's shortest outing since joining the Cardinals at three and a third. However, second longest relief appearance for Tyler Lyons in his career. One hit, two walks, didn't allow a Mariner to get past second base through 58 pitches. Just wonder after seeing something like that, does Mike Matheny put more of those high leverage situations late in games tight ball games lefty lefty matchups in the hands of Tyler Lyons. Well I think you got to uh, at least put him in that consideration and to think about it too Dan because sometimes now you're wanting to save Seacrest for a possible ninth inning. Base hit into left center Marte racing to third and it's back to back hits for Seattle here in the bottom of the first. And Diaz playing in the hole at shortstop and that ball more up the middle hit very hard so Diaz had no chance to go to his left and knock it down. Gutierrez almost relegated to pinch hitting duty nor starting against left handed pitchers.
Robinson Cano 247 home runs all in the American League most ever by an American League second baseman recently passed Joe Gordon played for the Yankees and the Indians late 30s through the early 50s one of six players with at least a thousand runs scored and a thousand RBIs through their first 12 seasons. Slow start last year, but part of it was due to injury, abdominal injuries, and strike one. Capota power stats. A look at the home run leaders for the Seattle Mariners: Cano with 19, Cruz 18, Seager with 15. Lynn picked up number 11 on Friday night the walk off against Trevor Rosenthal and Martin has got great speed too with 11 home runs and, and think about Lee the big Korean first baseman he's got 10 home runs and 137 at bats there's the 0 one now 0 and 2. Time he keeps that ball down. He's got great movement. But you gotta locate your pitches. Fastball in that last time. Does it set up something soft away, or do you repeat it and go back inside? Here's the 0-2. Tied him up. Gets the strikeout. A big one of Robinson Cano here in the first. Strike two and three, the same pitch. Got it going away. It came right back in there, and you can see the movement once again. When he keeps the ball down, the ball just runs. Very difficult to set it up in our Hyundai pitch arsenal. Good running fastball. He's got the cutter. He's got the change. He's got a curveball. Change up. He almost turns over. Looks like a screwball a lot to the right-handed batters. Now it's Nelson Cruz hitting 282, 18 home runs, driven in 49. Runners at the corners with one out. Cardinals using a shift here. Second baseman Matt Carpenter near the bag at second. Third baseman Jerko is near the line. Diaz just about at normal shortstop depth, if you will, if there's anything that's normal about defenses anymore. <laughs> Good pitch turned it over there. That's that yeah. pitch you're talking about right. I mean it just change up and everything but he has that movement where a lot of times it just goes away from the right hander but with that good movement away changes with the deception and and velocity. Garcia would love the double play the one one pitch taken just a bit high. A lot of talk in the offseason about the designated hitter potentially moving to the National League. No more, uh, no more in this offseason with the current collective bargaining agreement coming up at the end of 2016. And I think that'd be a big mistake. I do too. The game is much better the way it's played in the National League. There's your broken back, Garcia to second, low throw, Carpenter to first, safe. We'll see if this one's not reviewed. David Bell went immediately right down to the telephone to find out if they missed the play at first base. Garcia should be out of the inning. Watch his throw. Takes a crow hop, does everything, but he throws a sinker right down there. Tough play for Carpenter. He gets it, but then he had to double clutch it and to make the exchange. And he says he's safe. So does David Bell in the video. The yeah, only person to blame on this one is Jaime Garcia. Yeah. Yep. You know, just throwing that ball in the dirt. You know, you're expecting something chest high, and then you never miss a beat. But when you throw it right at the at the bag. Carpenter did a nice job to get the force out of second, but it really disrupted his timing and his throw back to first. So Cruz is your runner at first base, and it brings in Kyle Seeger. Good breaking ball, drops in for his strike. 
first innings have been a real issue for Garcia. Ten of his 35 earned runs coming into play have come in the first inning. After that, it's an ERA above three the rest of the way. Little squibber that rolls foul to Manny Active, former manager of the Cleveland Indians, then did some TV work. Now the third base coach for Seattle. So it's a fielder's choice. It goes 1 4. And Cruz picks up RBI number 50 this year to drive in Marte. Cruz and Seeger have been trying to battle for a second spot in the RBI race for the Mariners. Cano leads with 53. Now Cruz is second with 50, and Seeger's got 49. The one two pitch and a foul ball. Last two pair of brothers with 15 home runs each. This point in a season. Corey and Kyle Seeger, Brett and Aaron Boone back in 2003. Aaron Boone, that was the year he began in the NL Central with the Cincinnati Reds, then traded to the New York Yankees. And finished off as a postseason hero with his game seven walk off homer against Tim Wakefield. There's Colton Wong in left field and he puts it away. Mariners tie it up and it's 1 1 as we head to inning number two. MLB.TV Premium, the number one live streaming sports service, delivers everything you've come to expect and more. Out of market games, wherever you may be in high definition, visit MLB.TV for details. 1 1 our score as Tommy Pham will lead it off. 7 8 and 9 for the Cardinals here in the top of inning number two. Pham is 2 for 12 since being called up and looks at a strike. No. Margie and Herschel Price are watching back home. And Margie, please resend your text to me. Since Dan can't show me how to technically get it back, I think I accidentally erased it. Any other uh, personal <laughs> messages you need to get out? I think, you know, she twice sent me a message about her grandsons. Two of them are here with. I got to get it out there. I promised her. You know how that may how you, that works. Popped up off the bat of Fam into shallow center. Robinson Cano makes the catch. And it brings in Colton Wong. Eric Fryer on deck. Wong is hitting 231. Home run and six RBIs. Big happy birthday to young lady I met on the Cardinals cruise a couple of years ago. Helen Glisson, happy birthday. Watching Cardinals baseball. See, you know what I'm talking about. She never misses a cruise. <laughs> We're not going to miss her birthday. Long swinging the bat a lot better since he's come back up and feels much better about his swing. One ball, one strike. Got a hit in the left in the first two games of this series, and five for 15 on the road trip. Cardinals have asked him about the outfield now about a week into this, and he said he prefers left field. He's fine in center, but a little bit more comfortable in left. Maybe seeing a lot of that from Colton Wong as he strokes a single into center field. Third hit for the Cardinals today. I oh, remember Colton took uh, bang practice. They asked him to take bang practice in left field on Friday, thinking about maybe late inning defensive replacement, just to give him another option for Mike Matheny. And then he started last night's game and finds himself in left field again today. Talked to John Mosaloc, the Cardinals GM, before the game, and Brian Pena. His rehab assignment is up after the game today in Springfield. The Cardinals then officially would have to make a move on 
late Tuesday night. Wong thought about going to third. He'll stop there. So what you have, you have 20 days, and then tomorrow, this being the 20th, tomorrow would be a travel day for Pena, so it gives you an extra 24 hours, and then they'd have to make a corresponding move by the game on Tuesday night with Brian Pena. Well, but I'll tell you one thing, Eric Pryor has done nothing, nothing to disappoint anyone. He's hit 316 in his starts prior to that base hit. Done an outstanding job, and you know those those at bats don't come very frequent for him now. Here's Carpenter. He has been on a tear. Runners at first and second. Tripled to start today, and scored the only run for the Cardinals. Fantasy camp at Bush Stadium wrapped up today and our good buddy Joe Pfeiffer who runs those camps tells us that team Willie McGee Woody Williams and Gary Bennett fantasy camp championship Carpenter out to deep right center Willie Carey it's at the wall and it is caught Gutierrez a tremendous catch in right field up against the wall. It's a long way away for us, but it looked like he reached over the wall to make that catch. They would have hit on the top and bounced back in, but still a very nice play. Get a look at it here. Just a high towering drive. Gutierrez goes all the way back and then jumps up and you see the glove up on the yellow line. Wow, what a play. Yeah, nice play. Good base running by Wong. He knew that was either going to be a home run where he could have walked around the bases, or as it was caught, he was able to tag up and go to third. Here's Diaz. By the way, there are spots for that fantasy camp coming up in January. Cardinals.com slash fantasy camp for future camps. Be a couple coming up in January and always a lot of fun. And Fryer as the trail runner, he was almost at second base, could stepped on second if the play were not made in right field. But then he had to race back as Wong went to third. Have you ever wondered about a fantasy camp? Read the uh, Post Dispatch today, an article by Benjamin Hockman. As he participated in this week's camp, and it gives you a good idea of what it's all about. Not just the component of playing baseball, but being able to be around the former big leaguers and also the uh, the charitable component of raising money for sick kids. It's well done. Dan you've participated in the last couple of years down in Florida in that camp. If you can play it just maybe enhances it but it has nothing to do with your playing ability. The most fun is going to be the camaraderie with the players the you know when you're sitting in that locker room the morning. Uh, Morning meetings are undescribable. <laughs> we have fam family TV, <laughs> but they are some of the funniest things you'll ever imagine, and just a great time. If you're a Cardinal fan, you have to do it at least once. Mentioned that Paxton had to go back to Kentucky after he did not sign because he was dealing with Scott Boris he thought he'd be able to pitch his senior year ruled ineligible had to go to independent baseball the Grand Prairie Air Hawks the next season he dropped to the fourth round and then was taken by Seattle after being a 37th overall pick turn him loose on three and oh it is one you know it is kind of ridiculous you know the difference between an agent and an advisor I mean it's the same thing agreed the guy might be sitting in the same in your house in another room and team makes an offer you go run and throw and throw it by the your advisor three and two the count on Diaz who doubled into the gap in right center first time up picked up his 40th RBI. Well, Fryer, as we've seen, not only has he done a nice job behind the plate, he can run a little bit too. He's off with this pitch, the 3 2. 
And Diaz hits it foul. Three two pitch again. Strikeout of Diaz. Third strikeout for James Paxton and the Cardinals nearly picked up three. They don't pick up any. One one in the bottom of the second. We check in with Scott Warman. All right Danny thanks so much. You know you guys were talking about it last night. John Mabry the Cardinals hitting coach had a couple of stints here in Seattle as a member of the Mariners. In fact you go back to 99 2000 play with a couple of good players including Edgar Martinez and he says he takes a lot of what Edgar taught him as a player here in Seattle moving forward what he teaches a lot of his hitters he also said because he became such a versatile player with the Cardinals that extended his career and he said I think that's more important than ever before for a player now in this day and age to be very uh, a player like him uh, to extend their career and uh, we see a lot of versatility with this Cardinals team this season well you mentioned Edgar Martinez as you get a look at Dave Lee. The state in Mariners history Martinez picked up a double back in 2003 moved past Ken Griffey Jr. with that double all time in Mariners history. He's a leader in RBI games played at bats hits doubles total bases runs walks extra base hits not bad. You've got a name a street name right uh, after him just outside the ballpark. But he was an outstanding hitter, and they say even a better person. One two pitch. There's Edgar's. That's beyond the left field wall down the line. Entire 18 year career with the Seattle Mariners. Two time batting champion, all star seven times, five silver sluggers. You need 75 percent to get into the Hall of Fame in terms of the votes. The most he's received 43 percent. So it doesn't look like he's headed to the Hall. No and and I think his numbers do fall short. Out to right. Piscotti off his glove. Lead a second. And how in the world is he not at third base. Didn't run. You know, or didn't really want one. Because Piscotti went a long way, goes off his glove, and as goes to dive for it, goes right off the end of his glove and had to scramble up, go reach, race it, get it at the at the wall. And you're right, if he wanted to, he should have been had a triple. Well, it makes you think about a base hit. Cardinals certainly would have a chance to throw him out. So leadoff double by Lee, second double this year. And I think about the throws for Colton Wong. You know, here's a guy with a pretty strong arm. We'll see how that arm translates to the outfield, but it's a different throw. Second baseman, a lot of times you're three quarters, if not kind of slinging the ball over the first base, and you're in left field or any outfield position, you're more long and over the top. An easier throw. A lot of times people think second base, there's so many, it's so close to first, you really don't have any trouble with long throws, but how many times you racing out to the outfield and have to jump and turn around and throw the ball here more times than not he'll be coming in and making a throw from left field one ball one strike on Chris Iannetta good play again by Fryer to keep it in front Eric Fryer you know, usually when you talk about a backup catcher you want a guy that can catch and throw he can do that extremely well. We've seen that he's keeps himself in great shape. He's got a really good uh, running speed for a catcher, and he's been 
an offensive force. Now he got a couple hits last night late in the ball game, but there was only two hits on the road trip. Definitely needs a breather. Broken bat and it's lying to Jed Jerko. That bat wound up flying to the backstop. That's the first out. Well, Scott was also talking about in his report about the versatility of a player and, and Colton Wong certainly could be a defensive replacement in games to get his speed if he gets more and more comfortable with the outfield. Uh, well I mean that's the the problem where today we talk about carrying extra pitchers the Cardinals only have a four man bench and Mariners have only three man bench because they're carrying an extra reliever eight relievers. But if you're playing just one position, you better be awfully good. Here's Martine. And that's what at times that keeps Adams out of the lineup because he can only, you know, he can only play first base. And now Colton adding the outfield positions increases his velocity and probably playing time. And him out in front and it's popped out. Fryer gives it a look and it's out of play. One ball, one strike on Martin. He was a shortstop in the baseball academies in Cuba, then shifted to the outfield by his dad, who was his coach in a league that is the equivalent of a low, low minor league system game. Recently, three men were indicted for the extortion of Cuban players. And one of those that was involved in that is the young man at the plate. He was held at gunpoint. Family was held hostage for months. Hits it off the end of the bat. Diaz to first, no play. That's his former teammate at short, Aledmus Diaz. The point being of the story. Pretty amazing to see what some of these guys go through just to get to the United States, much less to Major League Baseball. I think the first time we heard of any kind of those shenanigans or illegal you know trafficking was with Puig. You know, it came out a little bit with him and then they kind of hushed it up. But as you're saying now, they kind of opened a can of worms with some indictments. And what they would do is, you know, help get you to escape, get you to the United States, and then you owed them a percentage of your future earnings. Sean O'Malley. One oh pitch. Take it for a ball inside. O'Malley's a local product. He spent parts of 11 seasons in the minor leagues. Out of Southridge High School. Split this last year between uh, AAA Tacoma and Seattle. Runners at first and second. 2 0 pitch. Hit off the end of the bat. And a fly ball that carries Wong into the gap in left center. Ground will double. Run does score. That's Lee to give the Mariners a 2 1 lead here in inning number two. Cardinals catch a break with Martin having to go to stay at third base on the ground rule double. Down and in just dropped the bat head. I think they wanted that pitch away. Back to the top of the lineup in Marte. Runners at second and third. The infield is drawn in. Mentioned how Marte grew up idolizing Robinson Cano. Cano, when he was with the Yankees, idolized Bernie Williams. And he said the way that Bernie Williams treated him, he would always treat others. And he said it's been a very special relationship between the two. Really helped him out at this level. He chops it foul, nothing in two. 
Uh, they really like this kid and his high ceiling, a switch hitter. 290 plus from the left side and 244 from this side. The 0 2. That's what he needed there, a strikeout. Fryer applies the tag. It's called by home plate umpire Carlos Torres. Second strikeout for Jaime Garcia. Now the infield can move back. Last year, the Cardinal pitchers were so good in these situations, stranding runners in scoring position. That's why they were so effective in close ball games because they just cut off those rallies. Didn't have the big crooked numbers all the time. And that's what Garcia has to do here. He got the strikeout for out number two. Now strand those two in scoring position with the third out. The shift is on for Franklin Gutierrez. Two outs and two on. Gutierrez did not play the entire year, the entire season of 2014. He has a severe nerve condition in his hips, really restricts his movement, and you'll see him step out, stretch, always moving to stay loose. He made a fantastic catch, the ball that was hit by Carpenter back in the top of the second. Garcia gave up two singles in the first inning. Three hits in this inning. He struck out two. He's not walked a man. And the Cardinals trail 2-1. In 2010, he had a perfect season defensively. He had 415 total chances and no errors. So that play made in right field was very capable. A little tapper hit up the third base line and it's foul. over the Tigers today nine to three that was against Justin Verlander Indians have won nine straight Cleveland started play today with a five game lead in the American League Central over Kansas City and we'll see them tomorrow night Remember the pitching we saw last year from Cleveland you can understand why they could win go on winning streaks Good block by Fryer. Field is straight away. Shift is on on the left side for Franklin Gutierrez. And he walked him. Base is loaded for Robinson Cano. Interesting to see how Garcia approaches this at bat with Cano. First time up, busted him in, and he was able to strike him out for his first strikeout of the afternoon. Cano hitting 240 against left handed pitching. to Carpenter and the Mariners strand the base is loaded we play two. Seattle is on top 
St. Louis Cardinals baseball from Seattle is brought to you by Ford, the official cars and trucks of the St. Louis Cardinals. And brought to you by the Missouri Tobacco Quit Line. Call 1 800 Quit Now. Matt Holliday will lead it off. 2 1 Seattle in the top of the third. It's Holiday, Piscotti, and Moss. Matt struck out first time up. Brother head coach at Oklahoma State. They fell short in the College World Series. Arizona defeated Oklahoma State 5 1 to advance to the final of the College World Series, and they'll face Coastal Carolina. They beat TCU. This has just been a terrible weekend. <laughs> Cardinal players, they're, they're all the moders and losing two up here. 0 2 pitch and a foul ball. It's really been an odd year. Last 13 games, Cardinals 6 0 against Chicago and Pittsburgh inside the division, yet they are 0 7 against the American League West. They've lost seven in a row in interleague play. Hit to the right side and taken by Lee. Last time they lost eight in a row in interleague play was championship season of 2006. If we have to lose today and we end up winning the world championship, I think we'll all be happy. But think about in between these uh, losses in interleague play. We sweep Pittsburgh and Chicago. You know, played so well against them on the road. Here's Piscotti. Struck out his first time up. Big gap in left center. Chicago loses again to Fernandez in the, and the. Uh, Marlins final there was six to one Miami beats the Chicago Cubs Jose Fernandez sixth straight double digit strikeout game that's now a Marlins record Velasco had done that twice in his career with Miami he did it five times and today Fernandez breaks the record with six and I guess we'll hear the controversy of how when do we shut him down Coming back off of Tommy John. See the Marlins coming up. Three and two on Piscotti. Reds beat the Padres three to nothing. Jay Bruce with a home run in that game. Speaking of home runs, the Twins, they hit six of them in a 7 1 win over the Yankees. Were they the. Didn't they hit. Was it seven? And Yesterday or so and lost the game was one of our Somebody, it was the White Sox. The White Sox. Seven home runs and lose. And it's a walk to Piscotti. Second walk issued by James Paxton, who is from British Columbia, Canadian born. His parents, he said, weren't too keen on the idea of getting up for 5 a.m. practices to go play hockey, so he gravitated towards the sport of baseball. Moss walked his first time up. away and Piscotti moves into scoring position just in and out of the glove of Ionetta. Pass ball. Pass ball and Piscotti was alert to it. Gets himself in scoring position. The 1 1. 
Into the right side. It's the shortstop cutting in front of Cano. That's Marte to get the out. Advancing to third. Piscotti. So 6-3 on the put out and it brings in Jed Jerko. Jerko came up in the first with runners at first and second and flied out to center field. One thing is for certain for the Cardinals they have to play better at home and coming up after the two games in Kansas City Cardinals will play the next 19 of 22 at Bush Stadium. We're going to have to take advantage of that. I'm sure they will. I mean, there's no rhyme or reason why they haven't played well at home. They always do. Tomorrow night, Adam Wainwright against Danny Duffy. Wainwright is six and four. Duffy is two and one. Tuesday night in Kansas City, Michael Walker coming off a very good start against the Cubs against Giordano Ventura. Ventura is six and four. And Waka is three and seven, and it seems like his timing and mechanics are finally right. Yeah, I think so. Gutierrez is under it, and he makes the catch. Cardinal strand a runner. They have left five on through three. Midway through three, Seattle on top. It's two one. Cardinals Insider gives you a behind the scenes view of the Cardinals with news features and more Lindsey Weber and Ron Waterman put this show together they'll recap Matt Carpenter's pro clinic sit down with scouting director and former pitcher Randy Flores Cardinals Insider really good show brought to you by your Mid-America Chevy dealers and you can find that after the game right here on Fox Sports Midwest and congratulations to Randy Flores and his staff by all accounts they did a great job of the draft. I saw some reports put their draft in the top three wow. in all of baseball. I I don't see where the Perez pick was that controversial. You know, obviously the best player on the board. 17 years age of, of age. I wouldn't want to think every decision I made was the right one. And he's off to a good start, really yeah. swinging the bat well. His pro debut, he had a couple of hits, including a triple. Next day he had two more hits. And they say that's the, the part that's lacking offense. We focus so much on you know the draft choices but once they're in the system it's a, about developing those players as you get a look at Nelson Cruz. Here's a 2 1 pitch. Gary LaRock and his staff do a terrific job. Right center. Bam on the move. He'll look up and it's gone. Opposite field home run. Nelson Cruz with number 19. We talked about it. The Mariners lead major leagues in home runs against left handed pitching. Garcia doesn't give up a lot of home runs, but they got him here. the seventh home run that Garcia's allowed. Nelson Cruz coming up back to back 40 home run seasons. Turns 36 a few days on July 1st. Had 44 a year ago. First Mariner since A-Rod to do that back in 2000. Ken Griffey Jr. 40 home runs. He did it six different times. Talking about the Seeger brothers. How about the fact that King Griffey Jr. played here with his father. Right. <laughs> they were back to back in the batting order, and I know one time they hit back to back home runs. How about that? Playing with your son. Not as good as it gets. Two balls and no strikes, and Kyle Seeger. We all remember. Griffey's 500th home run was hit in St. Louis on Father's Day with his dad in attendance. His dad was getting worn out traveling. <laughs> Junior was the first pick in 1987, 13 years with Seattle. Ground ball that's hit to Carpenter. 
And even though he requested a trade to the Reds, being closer to home, he'll wear a Mar uh, Mariners cap into the Hall of Fame. Payne Stewart passed away, and he was very close with Payne Stewart. And yeah, they were neighbors down in Orlando. He said that that opened his eyes that there's more to the, the, you know, just the professional sports, and he wanted to be closer to home. Home, as Al said, made in Orlando, so we went back to a hometown team for him, which was the Cincinnati Reds. And then he ended his career with a cameo here with Seattle. And try to say, hey, <laughs> it all started here. I, I think of this as a second home, and I'm going to go into the Hall of Fame as a Mariner. Center field, fam, can't get there. It's 1992 that Tom Seaver was inducted into baseball's Hall of Fame. He got 98.84 percent of the vote, which was at the time the best ever until this last offseason. And King Griffey Jr. got 99.32 percent of the vote and his number 24 has been officially retired at all levels of the Mariners system. No minor leaguers, uh, leaguers were that number. Nobody at this level were uh, will wear that number either. But isn't that kind of silly that no one's ever gotten on everybody's ballot. You know how, how, do, you, joke. how do you uh, sit there and say OK I'm not going to vote for him. You know what if what if everybody else uh, take that same attitude and you have a true Hall of Famer like Kring Griffey Jr. and you're not going to vote for Derek Jeter. Well it's automatic when you start talking about guys that played for the Yankees. But like, I mean 100 percent of the vote. Well I mean if Babe Ruth didn't get it Hank Aaron didn't get it just you the know point being it's Williams it's, and Maggio and and uh, Mutual. It is. Now many times what you'll hear from writers is they'll say well I didn't use it for this year because I know that that player is going to get in anyway so I'm going to use the vote on a player that's borderline. That's why they don't get to 100 percent. And and also Dan you can vote up to 10 players. So how do you say I'm going to vote. You know, I'm going to not vote for a surefire Hall of Famer and, and then vote for a borderline guy. To me what's interesting is that if you look back when Ken Griffey Junior was traded to Cincinnati that was the year that the Cardinals acquired our colleague Jim Edmonds. A high fly ball into left center fam calling for it and he makes the catch. And by all accounts looking at the numbers between the two and the injury factor for the two and compare them in St. Louis and Cincinnati Jim Edmonds was the better player. But overall Ken Griffey Junior clearly yes. great numbers but for Edmonds not to be on the on the ballot anymore I, I don't understand that either. I'm not saying he should be in I, I do think he's very very close if not in but not think, to be on the ballot doesn't make a lot I of think sense. We were all shocked when he got less than five percent and he got half of that what two point five percent. But I think a lot of that might have had to do early in his career when he was with the Angels. A lot more media out there and they saw that aspect of Jimmy as he was you know maturing as a as a player. But he was outstanding in St. Louis. I always said Jimmy was if he wanted to play he was in the top five of of players in his era. Two and oh. And the same thing, you know, with Ted Simmons didn't stay on a ballot. Another guy, you know, Al Oliver, great hitter in the 70s. Yeah. Any championships and, you know, couldn't stay on the ballot.
Three and zero on Martin with two outs and a runner at first. Up and in. Well, you look at what Tyler Lyons did for the Cardinals last night, and it plays into what we may see here today, which could be a short outing for Jaime Garcia. At the moment, not very sharp. Already at 63 pitches. And we're only in the third. And Dan, we talk about, uh, you know, in the open, we talk about his ability to get ground balls. He gets ground balls, you know, you're going to know he's on. He hasn't gotten that many ground balls today. And fly balls, the outfield. It's been two ground ball outs. Yeah. So runners at first and second for the ninth place hitter, Sean O'Malley. Mentioned he's a local product out of Kennewick, Washington. It's about three and a half hours away from here. Fryer has a play at third, throws there, and save! The Cardinals will take a long look at that one. You see Mike, the throw beating, strong throw by Fryer. Jerko was right there with a the tag, but did he get it in front of the bag? And now Mike wants to challenge this one. This could be a huge play where the Mariners run themselves right out of the inning. They get the tag down in time. Throw was obviously beat him. Like he's out. I think he may be safe. I thought the first one he was safe because he didn't get the tag down. That one, and of course, you were seeing it from behind. You couldn't tell really when the. He just showed one on the big board, and I think he's. Uh, got the Cardinal players are starting to walk off, but I think from that replay, the crowd reacted. Thinking he's safe. Jerry Davis, the crew chief, made the call over at third. Jerko just didn't put the, the tag down. Overturned. The Cardinals take it. Mariners run themselves out of the inning. American Girl and the Cardinals teaming up on Monday, July 18th for an exciting theme night at the ballpark. Fans who uh, purchase a special theme ticket receive a Cardinals baseball t shirt for their American Girl doll and a special offer from the American Girl store in St. Louis. Theme tickets now, they're on sale at cardinals.com slash theme. Here's Tommy Pham. Leads it off here in inning number four. It's 3 1 Seattle. I know what you're bringing home. At least two of them. <laughs> Here's a 1 0 pitch. One ball, one strike. By the way, how many socks did you get for Father's Day? I have to uh, regroup when we get back to the ballpark and pick up my uh, Father's Day socks. <laughs> 30,000 available for you. Yep. Hopefully they kept some aside. I think you know some people. Yeah. Bam, yeah. a swing and a miss. Strikeout number four. That's one thing Paxton, he keeps on working in on these batters. And he gets that. That's going to really kind of help him out in his career. Have that ability to get in on the right handed batters. And Scott Service, it's a, a trend in baseball. Guys with no managerial experience, this long bunch hit foul, and then getting a crack at managing in the big leagues Mike Matheny, Brad Osmus, Walt Weiss. 
White Sox Robin Ventura Craig Council Brian Price Paul Molitor the list goes on and on and Wong hits a fly ball into shallow center two down and Dan both the examples of service and and Matheny all right they have no experience you know but they were both catchers and Lost they're used to yeah oh there's 12 of them you know acta you know I'll, I'll go all around but there's 12 big league managers that were catchers and you assemble a coaching staff that uh, you know has managerial experience whether it's minor leagues major leagues and if you put your coaching staff together today you better get hard workers because the hours are incredible people would be shocked with the hours the coaching staff put in what they do on on our charter flights all the preparation that goes through and you got the analytics department that gives you a folder before every series and probably every day two and one on Fryer. Service hit 245 in the big leagues. Houston, the Cubs, Giants, Rockies, Astros. Played for Jim Henry, the former Cubs GM. He was the head coach at Creighton University in Omaha, Nebraska. Jim now working as a scout with the Yankees. Nice man. Very much so. Yeah. Alan Bennis played for it. Or pitched for it at Creighton. 2 2 pitch. Fryer lines it foul. He singled his first time up to left. Gadier Molina usually says he feels great. And Mike Matheny says, okay, we're going to play him. But he's also honest when he does need a day. Well, he was over for the road trip before getting two hits last night. Fryer strikes out two in the inning, five this afternoon, midway through four. Mariners with a 3 1 lead. Frank Garcia, any chance that he gets to play, usually produces here in 2016. More on that, let's check in with Scott Warman. That's right, Danny. And of course, uh, he started that uh, rally or was a part of that rally in the eighth inning when the Cardinals trying to come back with that win against the Mariners on Friday. And I talked to Garcia over the weekend, Dan, and you know, we were just talking about the last time about versatility. He's versatile, as we know, he can play second, short, or third. He told me, Scott, he actually does a lot more preparation when he's not penciled into the starting lineup when it, than when he is uh, because he has to be ready to play one of the infield positions. And obviously he has produced since being called up back in late May, Danny. He'd also be your third catcher if need be. He's been working on the outfield as well. There's Sean O'Malley. Found it interesting. Mike Matheny said earlier today that Brandon Moss has been taking ground balls on the left side of the infield just in case. Yeah. You know, you run out of position players and guys have to move all over the infield. And they said he has been better defensively than we expected. And if we need to, by emergency cases, uh, throw him at third base, we'd be comfortable in doing that. Well, I think that's what just shows you that he's shown that he's. Collecting those ground balls better than they thought at first. So, hey, take a chance. See what it looks like over the other side. It's, it's almost like being the emergency catcher. You know, there's guys, Jamie Quirk, even Clint Hurdle, extended their careers, some, in some cases, nearly 10 years, just by having that label that they, they could be the emergency catcher. Rarely, if ever, see a guy go back there. More times than not, managers just won't let it get to that point. They won't empty their bench to that point. Yeah, and and I, I got to tell you, as a, as a pitcher, and late in a ball game, the last thing I'd want to do is throw to a a position player, you know, trying to catch. But I would understand it. Broken bat, slow roller up the third base line and foul. And sometimes, you know, maybe an Eric Fryer is our best option to come off the bench. You know, but you're holding him back because he's he's your second catcher. Of course, this year, Mike Matheny, whoever he's plugged in as a pinch hitter, has been incredible. 
Cardinals with 10 pinch hit home runs to lead all the baseball. We're talking about Creighton University. It makes me think of Bob Gibson and Bob of course played basketball and baseball there. This state 1968 and that historic run that he had fifth consecutive shutout that he pitched breaking ball and a good one from Garcia he had 13 that year most since Grover Cleveland Alexander had 16 in 1916 I was reading his autobiography Al and I loved it he said most people asked him what he threw fastball slider curve change knockdown pitch he said really though I had nine different pitches two different fastballs two different sliders curve change up knock down brush back now I'm going to hit you to add up for the nine well I thought you know when he was pitching coach one time I saw him and I knew his mood wasn't a good one and I said what's wrong Bob and he goes nothing Come on, Bob what's wrong nothing what's wrong Bob well you know me I said something I probably shouldn't have said <laughs> he goes he goes one of our pitchers he goes he's already got four or five pitches and he goes he wanted to come up with a new one and I told him you ever thought about getting rid of a couple of those mediocre pitches <laughs> and try and concentrate on getting one good one <laughs> brutally honest <laughs> brutally honest but then he said he goes I was a two pitch pitcher and he was he was a fastball slider pitcher but as you said he knew how to manipulate he even told me in that he said I have a curveball but it's a roller like these guys mm -hmm. and he said I was scared to throw it Fryer applies the tag and a strike out of Marte that's for today for the Cardinals lefty Chevy Fox tracks is pitch in the dirt well, that just shows you how he deceptive he can be and Swinging at the motion, You're not picking up the ball that's bouncing. Hasn't been the prettiest game for Jaime, but he's still right in it. 3-1. Here's Franklin Gutierrez. Slow breaking ball at 70 miles an hour. Don't you think it's sometimes when we remember we saw our Hyundai pitch arsenal and only had like two two percent plus. Uh, Curveballs. Sometimes he he neglects that pitch can be very good for him. Sure. One ball, one strike. Gutierrez his fly to center and also drew a walk back in inning number two that loaded it up for Cano who grounded out. His biggest contribution though in this game, if you just joined us, might have been a home run off the bat of Carpenter. Certainly an extra base hit. Made a great play up against the wall in right. Rounds out to third. We head to inning number five. Mariners on top. Jim Hayes with a Bomberito update. Cubs at the Marlins. Jose Fernandez was dominating. Fernandez, seven innings of one run ball, struck out 13. Marlins win six to one. Cubs have lost six of seven. I like that. Dan Al, we send it back to you in Seattle. So they've dropped six to seven Jimmy thank you and if the uh, Cardinals could come back and win this game today they would be nine back found it interesting Matt Carpenter the other day was saying if we could get this at the All-Star break six five maybe four games we could really have some fun in the second half well what you what you got to hope is that the Cardinals play well enough to where you can put some pressure on on Chicago. I mean, they're not playing that well right now. They're under 500 in their last 10 games. Going to the count on Carpenter, who is tripled and also robbed at the wall by Gutierrez. So if you can, Cubs have this big, big lead. Everybody's printing World Series tickets, and they put a little pressure on them. We'll see how they react. 0-2 pitch. This is back in the second inning in a 1 1 game. Gutierrez going back in right with two runners on. Colton Wong would tag up on the play. Fryer had to get back to the bag at first, and what a play it was in right field. O 2 pitch. 
We've been talking a lot about it. Matt Carpenter deserves to be an all star. 1947 fans were permitted to vote. But after the Reds and their fan base stuffed the ballot in 1957 and they had every starter except one the commissioner stepped in. The fan vote was taken away until 1970. Obviously it's back in now you can go to Cardinals.com and vote. So you have the starters for the fan vote. Player vote is 16 players eight pitchers which is five starters three relievers and a foul ball. Also a backup at each position. The manager gets nine players and then you have the final internet vote. And that's how it's broken down for the all star game now in 2016. I would think Carpenter has got to be in. Right. I mean I'm, I'm more concerned about the Cardinals only having one representative. So we'll see. Deserves to be there. Six strikeouts for James Paxton. It's hard to believe that lefties and righties came in here hitting 317 against this left handed pitcher. 317. Actually, 317 one way and 318 the other. Jake Maxwell and Chelsea May from Belleville Illinois are here and watching Cardinals baseball. One ball one strike and a lead Miss Diaz three run homer last night. You look at OPS sabermetric look at a player with on base percentage and slugging percentage right now to put it in perspective how well Diaz has been hitting third best for a Cardinals rookie ever. That's ripped out to center field right on cue Martinez back can't make the catch Diaz to second and he'll stop there with his second double of the afternoon. That ball just seemed like it just kept on carrying and carrying. And Martin goes back, tries to reach up and haul it in. And right at the top of his webbing, slips out. There you see that highest OPS with Cardinal rookies. Pujols, Stan the Man, then Diaz, Medwick, and Hornsby. And that's on the rise today with two more extra base hits. Pair of doubles today for Diaz. He now has 18 this season. So there's three Hall of Famers and a sure fire first ballot Hall of Famer in Pujols. Holiday is over two. He represents the tying run. Ducky Medwick, the last nationally player to win the Triple Crown back in 1937. Miguel Cabrera, the most recent to do it. Yeah, and Ducky was the roving hitting instructor when I joined the Cardinals. I swear he could have still hit then he couldn't have run but <laughs> he, could, he could hit. Owing to the count on holiday very colorful colorful Hungarian ducky met. I cleaned that up. Upstairs at ninety nine on the gun. One two pitch to the Cardinals left fielder. That double by Aled Miss Diaz the first Cardinal hit since back in the second inning. The one two Diaz is running and that's a base hit out to left field down into the corner Diaz can walk home sliding for it O'Malley and Holiday 
takes a wide turn around second base and stops there with his 13th double of the season. Cuts the lead to three to two. Third RBI for Holiday. It's just his third hit on the uh, road trip. Low ball hitter, and he got one down. Hits it into left field corner. Diaz scores easily, and there you see O'Malley trying to slide, cut it off. It's got by him, but it wasn't going to change anything. Oh, they thought about going to, th to third, but uh, I think he made the right decision to stay. Stottlemyer out to talk to him. Stottlemyer, Mill Stottlemyer Jr. Crowd today, uh, today of 35,955, 35955. If you ever meet Mel Stoudemire Sr. I did. You know, nice man. pitching coach. Yeah, very nice man. Outstanding pitcher in his own right. Enjoyed being around uh, Todd when he was in St. Louis. Todd was a, another one of those fiery competitors. I haven't seen him for a And it is a fair ball. Just inside the line, off the bat of Piscotti. Holiday scores, and this game is tied. Back to back to back doubles for the Cardinals. How about that? And how about the the last two? One down the left field line into the corner. This one just barely fair inside the right field line. And another man out there for the Cardinals to bring in. how close that one is just fair by inches brings in Moss go ahead run at second base we're tied up at three here in the top of the fifth and only one out Moss rips it into right field extra bases here Piscotti will score Brandon Moss on his way to third Moss standing up with a triple. Cardinals have the lead, and it's four to three. Messed up. Four doubles in a row. Three and then a triple. The RBI, they take that lead, like you said. Moss has been productive. Time he's playing. Got 37 RBIs now. Nissan drive of the game and again just fair inside that first base line and down into the corner and right and Brandon Moss has his second triple of the season. Just one out you got to pick that runner up they got the infield in for Jerko. And it started with a strikeout as Carpenter was punched out. Six today for James Paxton. Double by Diaz off the wall in center. Holiday double down the left field line. Piscotti little flare down the right field line. And a triple by Moss into the corner and right. One ball, one strike on Jed Jerko, who is flied to center and also flied out to right. I would think with the outfield arms, even though some of them are pretty good out there for the Mariners, they're deep enough where a fly ball will score Moss. Took those hit two fly balls his first two times up. Hit to third and an error on Seager. His seventh of the year his second in this series and a run scores to make it five to three Cardinals. Tried to backhand that ball and just lost control of it. And then wasn't sure where it was. So broken bat. There he tries to backhand it, misses it. Now he can't find it. He almost stepped on it. So E5 RBI on the play. Seeger his seventh air this year. Brings in Tommy Pham. Five consecutive batters have reached for the Cardinals. Still only one out. Bam is popped out to second and he also struck out back in the fourth.
This is in. Activity in the pen right now for Seattle. They're trying to get this lefty through five. Pitch count at 97. It's Don Roach, who we've seen in the first two games of the series. Matter of fact, he was the winning pitcher on Friday night. Here's a 1 1. Check swing. Held up. So the Cardinals have put up a four spot here in the top of the fifth, and they lead it five to three. First lead of this game for the Cardinals since they jumped out to a one nothing lead after a half inning. Two and two. Seven today for Paxton. And the one thing about the Mariners, they are outstanding with scoring at with two outs. Let's see if the Cardinals can't help out. It's been a trademark of the Redbirds the last couple of years. Cold Wong is one for two. Sends a fly ball into left center and tailing back to O'Malley for the catch. Six of the Cardinals' eight hits are extra bases, with four of those coming in this inning. Four runs scored, the Cardinals on top. Two thousand sixteen marks the ninetieth anniversary of the twenty six World Series championship team. July first thirty thousand fans ages sixteen and older take home a wearable replica nineteen twenty six championship ring courtesy of Edward Jones after the game it's fireworks presented by Cooper tires and that's all coming up on July first. Twenty six was the first of eleven world championships for the Cardinals. Here's Robinson Cano. So Garcia and the Cardinals back on top. It's now 5 3. Cano here. Then Cruz and Seeger. 3 4 and 5 in this lineup. A little fly ball. Long way to go for Long. Diving for it. Can't come up with it. It'll be a double for Robinson Cano. His 19th this year. First hit in this game this afternoon. I was anxious to kind of see how Wong would play that. Would he be aggressive? Would he lay up and play it very conservative? He was very aggressive, and I like to see that. Almost makes a spectacular play. Long, long run. Kept it in the vicinity. Didn't get behind him. Or Cano could have gotten more than just the two bases. But as a pitcher, I think Jaime appreciates that effort right there. But that also will get the bullpen active. Nelson Cruz with a couple of RBIs, including a solo home run, his 19th. Matt Bowman gets up and thrown in the Cardinal pin. It's funny, you kind of forget about these long men of the Cardinals. They're the forgotten men of the bullpen because they come in and Many times it's those non high leverage situations which has been the case for Bowman for the most part Lions for sure. Well think about it you know when you had 13 quality starts in a row. Chopper hit to third Jerko looking back the runner Cano. You know you're not using a, a long man so. But Tyler was outstanding Tyler Lions last night. Four two thirds shutout innings. Only allowed one hit during that time. One hit, one walk, and gave the Cardinals all the opportunities to come from behind. They got close, but couldn't put it away. He's talking to Kyle Seeger about his family and two other brothers in professional baseball. There's the line on Lions. He said the one thing that his parents always taught him was that they are to play all sports. So fall would run around and they'd be playing soccer 
winner would be basketball then baseball went to North Carolina on a baseball scholarship said though my claim to fame is guarding Steph Curry playing basketball those two grew up in the same area I firmly believe that play all sports I know there's some reasons why some high schools want to have everyone have an opportunity they coaches will make you pick one sport but I think you're really doing a disservice to your athletes play all the different sports and what you learn in one sport is going to help you with another one one pitch held up Willie Wilson you know, we had a nice nice career as a baseball player but because of his family situation his best sport was basketball but he needed to go to baseball right away where he could sign out of high school and not uh, go to college to help out the family good pitch two and two the Cubs game for Jaime Garcia his last time out was a big one because in the six starts after May 11th posted a six ERA teams were hitting 369 against him. But that all stopped on Monday night at Wrigley Field. Trying to have that carry over to today. The 2 2. Driven out to center. Bam. Makes the catch. Cano tagging up from second to third. Turco trying to deke Cano to stand there like he's not going to receive a ball and a strong throw from Tommy Pham. And it brings in Lee. Mentioned the other night that Lee, as you get a look at the catch by Tommy Pham, nine home runs while playing in Korea in nine consecutive games. And that is the pro baseball record. The major league record is eight. Dale Long did it first, then Don Mattingly and Ken Griffey Jr. had a stretch of eight games with eight consecutive home runs. Two outs and a runner at third. Well, Lee is two for two today. So I mean, he's got to figure out a way to get him out and strand that runner at third. But Lee, you know, who is in a platoon most of the year with Lind at first base, that's kind of changing now, you know, because Cruz likes to play in the field and not just DH. Which his numbers say he should DH all the time. But Check swing and he went. Nothing at two. I mentioned that he was very popular in this nation of Korea. Played the last couple of years in Japan, but you know, 11 seasons in the Orient and big, big numbers. 323 home runs during that time. Shallow right, Piscotti. He's got it. Tremendous catch by Stephen Piscotti to take a hit and an RBI away from Lee. He robs Deho Lee. Well, he had a great jump on that ball. 5 3, St. Louis. July 2nd looked like the pros in a Matt Carpenter batting practice jersey. 30,000 fans ages 16 and older take home the Carpenter BP jersey courtesy of Ford. And tickets for July 2nd against Milwaukee can be found at cardinals.com slash promotions. It'll be Eric Fryer, Matt Carpenter, and Aledmish Diaz for the Cardinals. And a right-hander is in for the Seattle Mariners. This is our Chevy call to the pen. Don Roach appearing in the third straight game. When he came in on Friday, that was his Mariners debut. And he was the winning pitcher in that ball game. He was selected from Tacoma prior to the game on Friday. At Tacoma, he was 4-4, 4, 426 ERA and 14 starts. Signed a minor league free agent contract. 
December 5th with Seattle. He's pitched with San Diego and the Chicago Cubs, and he is from Nevada. His Fryer bunts it foul. He made 16 big league appearances in one start. 2014 with San Diego. 2015 he made one start, lost that ball game for the Cubbies. One point he was in the red system back in July of 2015 as Fryer grounds it to short. Taken there by Marte. And there's one away. Now seven minor league seasons with the Angels, San Diego, Cubs, Cincinnati, Toronto, and now Seattle. They needed a fresh arm. <laughs> and now he's pitching in his third game in a row. Infield shifts to the right side. Here's Carpenter. He has tripled. That was to start the game in left center. Hit one to the wall. That was caught by Gutierrez. May have taken away a three run homer. And then was called out on strikes back in inning number five. After he was struck out, Cardinals picked up four consecutive extra base hits, three doubles in a row, and a triple. And they picked up a lead. Eight hits aside, 5 3 St. Louis. On deck, a lead Miss Diaz. So Paxton, the big lefty, gives the Mariners five innings today. She strikes out seven. And the 2 1. Carpenter has nearly as many walks as strikeouts. 50 walks to go along with 53 strikeouts. Full count. And with that, Seeger, the third baseman, moves into the shortstop position with two strikes. Yeah, Paxton, five innings, eight hits, five runs, all earned, two walks, seven strikeouts. Carpenter, a high drive into deep right field. Gutierrez won't get this one. Matt Carpenter, his 12th home run, adds to the Cardinal lead. He drives in his 46th. It's another run scored, his second of the afternoon for what should be another all star appearance here in 2016. Another multi hit game for him. He's hit in five in a row and 17 out of 18. A triple. A near home run that was robbed by the right fielder Gutierrez and now a home run here so he keeps on adding to that resume not only for the all star game but that be putting up some consideration for MVP. No doubt about this one inner part of the plate. He's got that uppercut but really cut down on strikeouts this year. Cut swing, and I think he knew this one was gone. Out to visit it's Ionetta with Roach. Uh, two of the best at bats on this road trip have come from Aledmis Diaz. He had the 12 pitch at bat against Jake Arietta. Really seemed to unnerve Arietta. That was on Wednesday. Eight pitch last night at bat, then led to a home run. And you just see him making the adjustments as we go. Not just jumping on that first pitch, which is what he did earlier in the year, but he's made the adjustment with that pitch on the outside corner. 3 0. And he draws a walk. So the third time that Aled Miss Diaz has been on base to go along with a couple of doubles. OPS Carpenter. This is the highest OPS by a leadoff hitter since 1913, and he's on that list twice. On base plus slugging percentage OPS. Now Daniels had that one year with Cincinnati. Top of that, but Carpenter, two and five 
Since 87, is that what it was? Since 1913. Oh, 1913. That's a little longer than. Carpenter with two runs scored today up to 51 third most in the National League Chris Bryant with 55 picks up his fifth triple that second most in the National League he's in the top two in doubles average now right around 300 puts him in the top 15 and that's a base hit into right Diaz Stops at second. Can't watch the games on television. You can now stream games live on your mobile device. Just go to your app store, download the free Fox Sports Go app, log in, stream the Cardinals wherever you go. That may be one where you want to see a lead Miss Diaz push it to third. Three run lead, base hit into right, caught up in the grass, and he stopped at second. Go first for third. That really puts so much pressure on everyone. Find out. There's Piscotti. He struck out. He's walked and also a little flare for a double down the right field line. Picked up an RBI, number 39. David Rollins, a lefty warming up in the bullpen. So we'll see if Piscotti can't knock out this. Roach. How about the play he just made to end that inning? Tremendous jump on that ball, came in. Little daredevil is he'll leave his feet a lot of times, but always comes up with it or keeps the ball in front of him. Should know with the guy out in scoring position, this guy is going to come through. 468 is average with runners in scoring position at the start of play today. 0 1 pitch, one ball, one strike. Hopefully, we see his roommate, Gritchick, back up here at some time. But boy, you would think that uh, Gritchick can learn something for Piscotti. You know, some hitters kind of panic when they get into a RBI situation and other guys like Piscotti just thrive on it. One and two. And you talk about, you talk to Mabry about how many times you'll see Piscotti fall across the plate. You know. And he called him still a, a learn. He's still in work in progress, really learning, but really makes quick adjustments. One of the few guys that can make it inside of bats. Scotty swings through that pitch, strikeout. Two down, and it brings in Brandon Moss, and I'm sure they're going to go to their bullpen with the lefty up and loose to face Moss. We shall see. Well, he's on his way, so second visit, and He'll make the pitch and change. So that'll be it for Don Roach. And this is our Chevy call to the pen. 6-3 St. Louis. Moss coming up. Bryce Harper, Mike Trout, all the baseball superstars come together. Primetime event that lights up the summer. Major League Baseball All-Star Game from San Diego, July 12th, and it's only on Fox. This is David Rollins. He was drafted three different times. And then eventually wound up with the Toronto Blue Jays. Traded from the Blue Jays to Houston. Then Seattle selected him in the Rule 5 draft. Did serve a 80-game suspension. Tested positive for PEDs. And that was back in 2015. And uh, he was here last year as, as a rule five so he had uh, 20 appearances 0 and 2 ERA over seven and a half just was called up on Friday 
There's another arm. One ball, one strike. Brandon Moss at the plate. He has walked, he has grounded out. Also tripled into the corner and right for his second triple this year. And our opponents were hitting 190 against him in the minor leagues. Struck out 26, just walked one. Is 2 0 with a 2.05 ERA in 24 games for Tacoma. Some people thought that he was going to break with the club out of spring training. Didn't happen, but now he finds himself here in the big leagues. And the one two pitch to Moss. Struck him out. So Rollins comes in, strands a couple of the runners. The Cardinals have left eight on through six. Budweiser and the Cardinals proud to bring you the 4th of July $4 ticket sale. This is tomorrow at noon. Fans can purchase tickets to see the Cardinals and the Pirates July 4th through the 7th for just $4. $4 seats starting tomorrow, cardinals.com slash July. That's at noon at cardinals.com slash July. Jaime Garcia pitching into the sixth and a 6-3 St. Louis lead. I mean, sprinted out of the dugout to go get, take his warm-up tosses. I like that, you know, hustle out there, get your adrenaline going a little bit, walk off, don't run off like you're afraid. Kind of shows the other team that I've got the lead and I'm going to keep it. Ionetta here, then Martin and O'Malley. Bowman is back up again, so may not go too long with Jaime. 92 pitches on the day. Two balls and two strikes. In Kansas City tomorrow, 6:30 with the pregame show. First of four with the Royals. Two in Kansas City, two at home in St. Louis. Should be fun. Ooh, he just missed three and two. Garcia has allowed eight base hits. He has struck out four and walked two. And on the hands of Ionetta and fouled back. Ionetta was two for six against Jaime coming into this game. 0 for two today. And hopefully you can retire that leadoff man. You do that. Get the leadoff man every inning. You're well on your way to a shutout. Inning. And he strikes out Ionetta to start the bottom of the sixth. That had to bring a big smile to William and Charlie Baumkamp. They're here from St. Louis. Dad Brian has brought them here, and they have some of the best grandparents in the world. Margie and Herschel Price. You know, Margie is the executive director of the men's cancer dinner. Do an outstanding job with that dinner and raise a lot of funds to help cancer. But glad William and, Ch and Charlie have brought us some good luck. They were the slump busters. There's Martin. One out and nobody on. Pitch number 98. No balls, two strikes. Are you talking about the eight hits he's allowed, but those all came in the first three innings. So come out here strong and finish up this inning. Good six innings of work. Here's the 0-2. Breaking ball in the dirt. Safe go field opened up in 1999 ballpark the site just south of the old kingdom. Kingdom as you can see out there in left field the 
arches of the football stadium. My understanding that that was put on the site of the King Dome. King Dome was so small you could put it inside the Astrodome. Little chopper hit to the right side and a tough play for Carpenter safe at first. Took an odd hop on him as it hit the dirt. And it's a base hit for Martin. He's on base for the third time. Carpenter went a long way to his left to get to that ball and then it kind of bounced out of his glove but he held on to it. There he goes flips it up catches it again and then had a real tough throw and Martin runs well enough that he beats out that infield single. There's Sean O'Malley. Scott service with a three man bench that we mentioned before all hitters from the left side. Foul ball. Moss holding the runner on and so he had the fair territory guarded but it was foul. Yeah, as long as you got the left hander in there you're going to you know kind of neutralize their bench and that's why you see Segrist warming up. Segrist joins Bowman. That would tell you that Sung Wan Oh would be your closer then today. You would have to assume if Diaz, or rather if Segrist would come in. And even the, the fact that he's getting loose right now. Yeah, I, and I think that that would be our first choice. You know, you got very capable Segrist, Broxton, and O. And I'd like to see O be the guy. Could change every day, just according to circumstance. Mike Matheny talked about how you evaluate Trevor Rosenthal, and he said, "You look at velocity. Is it there? Yes. How does he feel? Says he feels great. So at this point, he said, we just need a confident closer. See, see, uh, Maloney's trying to get Wong's attention and move him over towards center field. It's called by the home plate umpire." Carlos Torres in a strikeout of O'Malley. Two in the inning and six today. As Torres is hearing it from the bench in Scott's service. Can't argue balls and strikes. He just got tossed. I think Scott's saying, ask for help. But once a home plate umpire calls it, yes. it's a moot point. <laughs> it's in the books. <laughs> Sided conversation <laughs> if I've ever seen one. Well, and and you know, I give Torres some credit. Don't get him baited into saying something or you know, getting any far involved. And he listened to what Scott said. Then the crew chief, Jerry Davis, came down and home plate umpire just walked away. Here's the pitch. And it looks like those those hands come through. You see a check swing from the side. It almost always looks like the guy goes through. So I would think that if our guy did it, we would have called it a strike. So two outs, runner at first, back to the top of the lineup, and Marte singled and scored back in inning number one and also has struck out twice. Back to Rosenthal just for a bit. He said we need to find lower leverage situations to get his trust in his stuff back. Fastball location for Rosenthal is the key. He's been elevating that. He said so many throw hard in the game today but you have to be able to locate and Trevor Rosenthal has 21 walks in 24 innings and it just always seems like he's pitching from behind 1 0 2 0 and you get in those counts, you know what's coming. It's a fastball. And that's what he's getting beat on an awful lot. 
and it appears that that fastball even though it's high octane it just doesn't have much movement at all. So obviously it's one of those little blips on the radar and he'll figure it out. He'll go out there and get some uh, outs strikeouts get his confidence back and you know Mike Bethany would be the first one to get him back in the closer role when he when he's able to do it. The 2 1 pitch to Marte. Two and two with two outs and a runner at first. Red always tells me a story that he was in a meeting with Big Vine and Bing was saying, Oh, Al's great. He's got all, you know, fans love him, this and that. He's so eccentric. And Red goes, Yeah, wait till he loses a foot or two off his fastball. <laughs> Broken back and over Diaz. Good play by Wong to barehand that and to keep Martin to the bag at second base. He made a very good play on a ball that was hit down the left field line last night and held a runner at second base, or rather first base, not to allow him to get to second. And after that, there was a base hit. So it saved the Cardinals a run, even though they lost the game five to four. It comes in here. There's where you're talking about the bending down and barehanded it. So Jaime's day is through. Goes five and two thirds. Two more hits this inning, given what ten on the day. So two on the tying run coming to the plate and our Chevy call to the pen. Kevin Segrist is our Chevy call to the pen as we get a look at the Hyundai pitch arsenal. Nothing too fancy about that fastball change in a much improved curveball here in 2016. Franklin Gutierrez as single to center. He's also walked and grounded out. Runners at first and second. And Gutierrez represents the tying run. 6 3 Cardinals here in the bottom of the sixth. Five and two thirds for Garcia. Ten hits. Struck out six. Walk two. And he's responsible for the two on base. Gutierrez one for one off of Segrist. You know Kevin as you mentioned really worked hard in spring training on that curveball. He's always had the ability to retire right handed batters. Especially with the fastball and an excellent changeup. But the curveball was needed for the lefties. But he's using an awful lot of with the righties too. One ball one strike. Garcia threw 110 pitches today. You can see where Segrist would finish off this inning in quick fashion and then be available certainly to pitch next inning too. I think that's something that you and I both would like to see. Some of the guys going double innings. High fly ball. Deep left. Wong is back. We're tied. with his ninth home run. I talked about how they lead the Mariners lead major leagues with home runs off a of left handed pitching. Second home run that they've hit today off a of lefty. 
sixth home run allowed by Kevin Segrist and now we're tied up at 6-6 six, six here in the sixth. Got to turn that momentum around real quick. There's a 1-0. Closes the book on Garcia. He allows five of the six runs today. One ball and one strike on Robinson Cano. Cardinals won, swept the Angels, their first interleague opponent, and winless seven straight since then. Against the American League. There's that curveball and charging is Jerko and out at first. So Cano retired, but a three run homer with two outs here in the six off the bat of Gutierrez, and we're tied. The Gateway Honda home run inning. Cardinals hit a home run. The Gateway Honda dealers donate $1,000 to the Make a Wish Foundation of Missouri. So after jumping out to a 6-3 lead, that's a race to the one swing of the bat by Gutierrez. Three-run homer, and we're tied up at 6-6. This will be the fourth pitcher used by the Mariners here today, and it's our Chevy call to the bullpen. Nick Vincent will come into this ball game, and remember they had to make some, their pitching staff was on fumes. They're carrying eight relievers after they lost six in a row before the Cardinals came in town. Vincent, his last outing, retired the side in order in the seventh inning on Friday night against St. Louis. 34 games, two and two, ERA, 3.06. He's got one save and six opportunities and 11 holds. 43 home runs hit today in Major League Baseball. 43. There's Jed Jerko has reached on an air and also fly to right and fly to center. That output during the home run challenge, didn't we? Most in one day this year has been 50 home runs hit. Back on May 31st, and 43 hit thus far in Major League Baseball today. One ball, one strike on Jed Jerko. And Jerko may add to it. Out to center. It is gone. Jed Jerko, his seventh of the year. Redbirds back on top. It's 7 6. And then he hit this home run against his teammate of a year ago. Vincent was acquired from San Diego for a player to be named later, and Jed rudely greeted him. Jed Jerko just helped the Gateway Honda dealers donate $1,000 to the Make-A-Wish Foundation. This ball club has been very, very good at closing out ball games, scoring a lot of runs late in the game, seventh inning or later. And the Honda dealers, they, they, they had to And that's well hit. Out to right field. Did they go back to back? Yes! Home run, Tommy Fair. First of the year, back-to-back -back solo shots. Jed Jerko, Tommy Pham, two-run lead, St. Louis. Don't stop there. On the dealers got a lot of money. Lot Tommy of Pham to just helped the Gateway Honda dealers donate $1,000 to the Make-A-Wish Foundation of Missouri. Jerko, you see this one, high-towering blast. Out to left center, pretty much straightaway center, and then Tommy Pham hits this one to the opposite field. Gutierrez robbed Carpenter early in the game of a home run, but not this one. Long, that'll stay in the ballpark. T lines out to Cano. Two home runs in this inning, three today for the Cardinals, part of this 12 hit attack, and they lead it eight to six. About the extra base hits, all the doubles, triple, couple triples. 
three home runs. Nine of the 12 hits have gone for extra bases. Here's Fryer, strike one. No activity in the Cardinals pen, and with the DH being used in an American League park, you don't run into the pitcher spot, so certainly you'd see that Kevin Segrist would pitch the seventh inning. Eric Fryer came in batting 316 in his starts this year, and he's one for three. He's done a very, very nice job when called upon to give Yachty a rest. Offense has been a pleasant surprise, and defensively, he's you know, been as good, if not better, than advertised. Stand, but Vincent came into this game here today not allowing a single base hit to a Cardinal player. Ask him to move the rosin bag behind the pitcher's mound, and there's two outs, and here is Carpenter who is homered here today. Go ahead Al I know you want to do it. The only thing they've done since 1968 to help the pitcher and it doesn't work. We call that the Roboski there. To help the pitcher clean his spikes. And the old fashioned. Tongue depressor works much better. A little bit obsolete in this ballpark with a dome that if it started raining, you could cover the field. Frequently up here in the Northwest. Just a bit. <laughs> Just a bit. But yesterday and today are absolutely beautiful days. 2 2 pitch. A little check swing by Carpenter charging the shortstop and he makes the play. Well, a couple of home runs and once again we thank the Gateway Honda dealers and their donations to the community. The Make a Wish Foundation of Missouri. They don't mind signing that check. The Gateway Honda dealers are happy this afternoon. St. Louis Cardinals baseball on Fox Sports Midwest is brought to you by Bud Light. Raise one, two right now. And by your local Volkswagen dealer. Gorgeous day. The Pacific Northwest. In Seattle Washington first time we've been here since 2002 to face the Mariners they've had three visits to Bush Stadium in St. Louis but first time back here since 02 the year that Sotoguchi in that series made his major league debut every Cardinals batter has at least one hit today and every Cardinals batter except for Wong and Fryer has a run scored and at least in RBI so the offense is picked up here in game number three and we'll see if the bullpen can make it stick Segrist is second inning of work in relief of Jaime Garcia he came into the game it was a three run lead at the time gave up a three run homer to tie it up now the Cardinals on top by two and potentially a chance at a win called the vulture but right now 
you know his teammates are rooting for him to go out there and pitch preserve the lead give them one win in this three game series here and stop the seven game losing streak against the American League. Cardinals about hit Seattle 12 11 and they lead 8 6. Here's Nelson Cruz. Fastball that is strike at 92 from Segrist. You know Dan is the worst feeling in the world to come in trying to preserve a lead and and allow the other team to tie it up. There's one thing worse and that's what Rosenthal experienced on Friday night come in trying to for a save and end up walking off the field as a loser. But change up down and in to Lind and it was a no doubter. Yeah, and but some way somehow you got to be regrouping thinking positive thoughts by the next game. One and two the count here Segrist has to forget about the, the three run home run he allowed and realize that he's now trying to preserve an eight six lead. Nelson Cruz with an RBI back in the first solo home run in the third and five home runs hit in this game three by the Cardinals Carpenter Jericho and Pham go back to back Cruz is homered for Seattle along with Gutierrez and his three run shot and the one two pitch we'll do it again you know, I said it earlier but it sure seems like it is pronounced when you, know, you get on the West Coast and nighttime especially in Southern California the marine layer comes in and kind of knocks the ball down and it's hard to hit home runs but during the day the ball travels so much better Get the five home runs an indication of that to today and the fact that they've got some sluggers oh yeah and three pl players in the middle of their lineup that 15 or more home runs. Gutierrez one shy of double figures after his home run. Curveball hung it and it's a fair ball. Dug out of the corner by Colton Wong and a leadoff double for Nelson Cruz. Cruz with his 12th double of the year. Second base hit today. And I, I this was a good at bat and Cruz is a good hitter but there's a hang and breaking ball. And we, I start talking about it a little bit but in spring training he really perfected that curveball and it has helped him quite a bit against left handed batters but he had no problem retiring right handed batters with his good fastball and change up. And we've seen that he's throwing a lot of the curveballs to the right handers and I think he's gotten hurt by it more times than it's helped him and gone away from his very good change up. Then you kind of lose lose the feel for it. Strike two, Kyle Seeger. Fly to left, he is grounded out to second, also lined out to center. Tying run at the plate. There's a good curveball there. Had him yeah. way out in front. 0 oh and 2. And see, it's it's a lot easier for him to throw the curveball to lefty because starts it out there and most of the time he wants it to end up in the dirt or outside but to a right hander you kind of have a tendency to hang it a little bit because you you don't want to hit the guy. O2 pitch to Seeger. Fastball got him on the outside corner. This sneaky fast with his fastball just freezes a good hitter. A little bit outside, but call goes Kevin's way. Dejo lead. Double into right, single into center. And Piscotti robbed him of a base hit and an RBI back in the fifth. With a diving catch to end that inning. 
One out runner at second. Pitch misses in. I don't know how much time Eric Fryer has left with the Cardinals with this stint. But we need to say it again and he's done a really good job again today a lot of balls in the dirt Garcia is one that throws it continuously in the dirt with his off speed pitches Segrist has thrown a couple in the dirt and those balls have gotten nowhere I mean he's he's done a really good job backing up Yadier Molina and who knows maybe it's a different corresponding move when they decide to activate Brian Pena but give him a lot of credit for the time that he has been here. I'll tell you what he has not done anything to disappoint. He has been an absolute plus. Calls a good game guys you know he's obviously keeps himself in very very good shape. He can run. Runs well for a catcher. He's contributed over 300 near 400 average but over 300 when he starts games. The 2 1 pitch. Fastball, a good one, 2 and 2. The 2 2. That's it out of play. Broxton warming up for the Cardinals in their bullpen. Well, again, that would tell you that O would be your guy in the ninth. No doubt. Two balls, two strikes on Deho Lee. Cut right there. 94 out over the plate. Right over the shoulder of Fryer. Two two off the end of the bat little squibber rolls fair into the glove of Brandon Moss for the out and Cruz advances to third with two down celebrate Independence Day at the ballpark take home a unique hat Monday the 4th of July 30,000 fans ages 16 and over receive a replica Cardinals pillbox baseball cap courtesy of Brown and Crouppen law firm. Get your 4th of July tickets at cardinals.com slash promotions. So two outs runner at third. And the batter is Chris Ionetta. Today is lined out, flied out, and struck out. Foul back. Braves beat the Mets five to two today. They split that four-game series. Chris Davis with his seventh career grand slam as the Orioles defeat the Rays 12 to 5. Baltimore leads the American League East three games in front of Boston four in front of Toronto. 
to deep left center field. Tommy Pham shading from the sun as he takes his hat off. Now that's one way to do it. It worked. Shading from the sun, he takes his hat off. I have never seen that. <laughs> I'm with you. <laughs> Just like you do it in the backyard. Jim Hayes with another Bomberito update. Royals trying to snap a four-game skid this afternoon. Home to Houston, Kendry's Morales. Solo homers in the fourth and seventh. His 15th career multi-homer game. Royals win 6-1. to one. Dan Al, we send it back to you in Seattle. All right, Jimmy, thank you. 12 hits aside, 8-6 Cardinals here in the top of the eighth. I honestly have never seen a player do that. I have not either. I mean, it worked. All right, like you say, every day you'll see something new. <laughs> we just did. New pitcher is Edwin Diaz, the top young hard throwers that they have for the Mariners. We saw him last night. Chevy called to the pen. Former starter in the minor leagues and now working out of their bullpen. Yeah, he was called up from double A Jackson on June the 4th. He's held opponents scoreless in seven of the nine games this year. Well, he looks like a lively arm. Kind of got that body and whip action. 1-1. One, one. Diaz today. A couple of doubles. He's now up to 18 this season. Run scored. RBI number 40. Was called out on strikes and walked for the 22nd time this year. Just missed two and two. And a strikeout of the Led Miss Diaz. Pitch. Down and away, right on the black. Tough pitcher's pitch. Gets the strikeout. Ashley and Matt Fawns are here, and their granddaughter, Ruari. They're all attended all three of these games here. Matt is stationed at McCord Air Force Base in Seattle, and we thank him for his service. Got to win one for the Air Force. Holiday two for four. He struck out, grounded out. Picked up a double and an RBI in the fifth inning. Cardinals scored four that inning. Thirteenth double of the year and also singled. So two for four on the afternoon. One one pitch. Hit out of play. Matt DH in all three of these games here. So a little bit of a break. After his first two plate appearances, he was just two for 18 on the road trip. Now four for 20. Wild. Take a little advantage of that. Don't hear that term much anymore, do you? Effectively wild? No, sir. Leave that hitter a little uneasy in that batter's exactly. box. 2 2. Because it seems like guys, right or wrong, 
all are throwing mid 90s coming out of the pen and it's all like robots coming out of there. Yeah. You and, know there's same arm angle a lot of times hitters are running up there because they know that you know they're never going to be thrown inside. It have to be a mistake. Always going to get out of play. Right by the Seattle dugout out of play. So it's off to see the world champion Kansas City Royals tomorrow. Kansas City three games above the 500 mark at the start of play today. They won today is uh, broke a four game losing streak so something's got to give. Three two pitch and Holiday hits it a ton. Center field track wall it's another one. Holiday goes deep. The Cardinals with four home runs this afternoon. That shot number 14 for the big man in left field. And also career number 150 as a Cardinal. 150 career home runs for Matt. He's been an excellent addition to this ball club. Signed a big contract, free agent, and he has lived up to it. He's lived up to his part. I think the Cardinal organization has done the same with his success. Five straight years going to postseason. But there is no doubt about this one. Dead center field. So Holiday up to 14, two more RBIs, and he's got 44 this year. And he only hit four home runs last year when he was injured twice for that. Popped up behind home plate. Well, you think about Matt Holiday and start projecting these numbers out. And for the Cardinals, today it's uh, game number 74, so we're not even at the halfway point. You know, you're looking at potentially 30 and 80 to 90 RBIs. I remember he got off to a slow start, but this month of June, he's really picked up the pace in the home runs. And Scotty strikes out. Yeah, and I think all the weight that Matt has lost this offseason and kind of will really pay off in the second half. Keep him fresh a lot longer. And well, the Cardinals have, and many teams have picked up on this, studies about how to give players time off. And they've been very conscious of the efforts of Holiday to get himself in just ridiculous condition, but also to figure out times every week to get him time off there's a base hit by Moss it's kind of like sabermetrics you know you look at the numbers the numbers bear it out that you should do certain things or shifts same thing could be said with time off and the studies have been done to give players more time off to keep them better prepared for the long haul of a season well, I, you know Yachty and you know holiday guys like that want to play every single day but they know as they get older there's going to be periods that they get a little run down arm weary and you got to understand that but I, I think that's what really happened to Johnny Peralta last year I mean they just wore him right into the ground where the second half was just a struggle and maybe the blessing of, of his thumb injury is the fact he missed 57 games. But I thought today was a good time to give him a rest because he was dragging a little bit the last few days. Jerko has reached on an air back in the fifth and also hit a solo home run. 0 2 pitch. That gets away and Moss on his way to second base. Pitch this time earlier there was a pass ball. Ionetta, you know, just this kid with his live arm, you just got to kind of gonna miss location quite a bit at times. Here's a one-two. And Jerko hits it in the air out to left center. Catch is made. The Cardinals have 14 hits this afternoon. 10 have gone for extra bases. 9-6 St. Louis. 
Well the Cardinals have four home runs hit today. We haven't seen uh, Carlos Martinez throw that cup of water in the face of the home run hitters. He is here today we understand. He's just not on uh, cup duty I guess. <laughs> this copyrighted telecast is presented by the authority of the Cardinals and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the St. Louis Cardinals. Broxton will take over here. He's been very good of late. First pitch to Martin is taken for a ball. Scoreless baseball in 26 of 31 outings. Ending in a third for Kevin Segrist in relief of Jaime Garcia. Went five and two thirds. There's a strike one and one. Back for strike two. Outfield is straight away. Martin has an infield hit twice and also walked. Fouls it back. Look at Broxton. ZRA in April was 1.80. Struggled in May with an ERA over nine, but this month he's bounced back and is not allowed an earned run in June. And the one two pitch from Jonathan Broxton to Martin. Popped up left side. Jerko, foul territory. Makes the catch. Nice play by Jerko. A little basket catch. None better than Terry Pendleton with that over the shoulder catch. From what I've seen from third baseman. How about how far Terry could go back? Yeah, it was in incredible. Foul territory, and then and then how many times he turned and threw out a runner at the plate. But there you see the little basket catch. Got a little more foul territory here than some of the newer ballparks. Now it's O'Malley. Terry could get all the way down to the bullpen areas. Old Bush Stadium, too. The bullpens were down the lines. Here's a 1 0 pitch to O'Malley. 9 6 Cardinals. Nolan Arenado made a play at Bush Stadium two years ago. It's the best play in the new Bush Stadium by a third baseman on those type of plays we've seen yet. Rolling at a few, but Arenado was way down the line. I was looking at some of the numbers in the National League, and Arenado was all over the place. You know, he's a great defensive player, which you just noted, and you know, offensively having an MVP type season. Another question for the Rockies will they keep Carlos Gonzalez keep that team together Trevor Story has come up and contributed very nicely the shortstop a lot of home runs for the Rockies Colorado is 35 and 39 12 games back in the West 3 1 pitch make it 3 2. Didn't like that one. That call. Just missed, and it's a one out walk.
Back to the top of the lineup and Marte. Two strikeouts, two hits. Both have been singles. Gutierrez is on deck. He had the big three run homer in the sixth. Strike one. Jonathan was telling me the other day he does expect his fastball season goes along to get better and better and better in terms of velocity. He's consistently 92 94 but you'll see him pop 96 very few times he'll do this but he'll hit 97 98 one pitch and a ground ball Moss to second that's all they're going to get with the speed of Marte so they get the lead man and it brings in Gutierrez. See a pinch hitter. This will be Seth Smith, who has started the first two games of this series. He's over five off of Broxton, so Cardinals were happy about this one. Cardinals putting on the shift. Robinson Cano is on deck. Gutierrez had a single, a walk, and a three run homer, and they'll pinch hit for him with Smith. Righty lefty matchup here. Two outs, runner at first. Uh, Gutierrez pretty much now is, is a pinch hitter himself. Or he gets a, the starts. Uh, against left-handed pitching but you can see how much he has produced with his home run pop and right to Moss who was holding the runner on at first Broxton a scoreless eighth inning we head to the ninth and the Cardinals on top Jim Hayes and Rick Ankill with you in our Fox Sports Midwest studio at Ballpark Village. Coming up after the game on Missouri Lottery Cardinals Live, Rick breaks down the cart's quest to avoid the broom. Plus? Plus some wham, bam, thank you, man, long balls. And let's see if we get a chance to see O shut it down here in the night. All that plus play reaction. Dan, Al, we send it back to you in Seattle. Chevy called to the pen, takes his two, one of the three lefties for the Seattle Mariners. Nuno comes in this game. First time we've seen him in this series. He has not allowed a, a run in 21 of 27 appearances this season. Got an emergency start on the 23rd there in D Detroit when they lost their starter before the game started. Back in June of last year, Diamondbacks traded Nuno and Mark Trumbo here to Seattle. And that's well hit down the left field line, and it's gone! Tommy Pham, his second home run of the day. He's gone to the opposite field. This one, out in a blink of an eye, a line shot down the left field line, and count him up. That's five home runs hit for the Cardinals today. A little fun, like you say, his first home run was a shot to right field this one just a rope frozen line drive that goes off the back wall and the Cardinals are having a little fun there's Martinez and the water toss May 2nd at home the Cardinals had a five home run day they've done this multiple times that was the last time they did it so five home runs and two have hit been hit by Tommy Pham. One of the things I like to look at is when you know a goal is to score at least in four innings of work. Popped up off the bat of Juan in foul territory and the catch is made. Cardinals came in fourth in home runs in the National League. Just a hang and break a ball just sat up there and what a rope. Never got high altitude, just goes off that back wall. And in a blink of an eye, a second home run. Five home runs. Cardinals have 
scored. Kick to short. And Fryer is retired. Crowd number two. And scored in five different innings in this ball game. And one of the things I like to look at is when you can score in four innings or more, you almost guarantee a win. Cardinals are 16 and three this year when they score in four innings. So scored five innings here today. Got a chance for run that record 17 and three. Ten runs on the night with 15 hits. That's well hit. Deep right. It is gone. Six of them today for the Cardinals. The second for Matt Carpenter. A long one into right fail. This man is red hot. Lucky number 13 for Matt Carpenter. And the birds are pouring it on here in game three. Can we use some of these runs in the last two games? But Cardinals look like they got mad today. They're having a lot of fun. Martinez would have gotten so armed if he was starting with the first home run. Diaz into shallow right. And that drops him. Aledmus Diaz on his way to second base with his third double of the game. So at the 13th extra base hit. With seven out of 17 today. Tough sun field. You see Seth Smith who just came in there. Lucky he didn't hit him. Here's the sixth home run tonight. That ties the high for the high for the season for the Cardinals, and no doubt our Carpenter knew it. Remember, he had a home run robbed back in the second inning. But two home runs and a triple today for Carpenter. Eleven to six. Bowman is throwing along with O. It's now a five-run lead, non-save situation. Six home runs tied for the most the Cardinals have hit this year. Holiday hit one. That was just an inning ago out to center field. The Cardinals have 17 hits. 13 have gone for extra bases. Holiday strikes out. It has been an offensive explosion here in game three for the Cardinals. Six home runs, 13 extra base hits. Safeco Field here in Seattle, 13 extra base hits. Ties the Safeco Field record for the most extra base hits in a game for either team. The Cardinals, the all time record for home runs in a game is seven. The Cardinals have six. Carpenter with two of those six. Tommy Pham with two home runs today. Holiday with a home run. Jed Jerko as well. July 12th of 1996, the Cardinals had seven home runs. Prior to that, May 7th of 1940, they had a game with seven home runs. It's been done twice. What a game this has been. Yeah, look at already Cardinals 12 times have gone 10 runs or more just did it nine times all last se season Cleveland hit eight in a game here at Safeco Field back in 2004 most ever in Safeco history there's Robinson Cano to lead it off against Matt Bowman in our Chevy call to the pin how about the fact that there are 19 extra base hits in this game, including five, or excuse me, eight home runs by both teams. Matt Bowman going to close it out.
Tommy Pham second time he's had a two home run day did that last season against Milwaukee one ball and two strikes that's it out of play Robinson Cano growing up picked up the name of Robinson from his father who idolized Jackie Robinson we've seen his dad pitch to him in the home run derby he's looking for home run number 20 of his season one two pitch now Matt Bowman rule five pick has really done a good job sixty five point nine percent ground ball ratio. Two two pitch. Had him out in front and it's popped up shallow left who wants it Diaz shortstop takes it. That's the first out. Take a look at all these home runs hit by the Cardinals. It started with Matt Carpenter, then Jed Jerko, Tommy Pham opposite way. Holiday into right center. Pham the line shot down the line. And then Carpenter tattooed that pitch for his 13th home run this year. Well, he scored first in this ballgame, first inning, but then were held scoreless until the sixth. But from the sixth on, they have been outstanding. Four, one, two, one, two. Three crooked numbers. One ball, one strike on Nelson Cruz. Owen was selected in the Rule 5 draft from the Mets. You know, all the young, talented starters they got with the Mets. Well, Bowman was at AAA last year, Las Vegas. He led the Pacific Coast League in in losses. But he was a starting pitcher with the Cardinals. What they like about him is they like him as a reliever with that power sinker. And he's third in the National League with that 65.9 ground ball percent. Smart kid and looks like he's handled this very, very well. Three and two the count. Old foul. Two pitch on its way again, and he walked him. We turn to our Budweiser player of the game. Cardinals leading by five here in the bottom of the ninth, and it's Matt Carpenter. Big day, three for six, triple, two home runs, drives in two, scores three runs. Our Budweiser player of the game. You had some choices today, didn't you? I don't make the selections. It's all done by our esteemed producer. Brian McCann with input from our esteemed director Tom Me. Keith Overman also chimes in Keith O'Brien those two are together all the time it's trying separate. to figure out the latest trends in the game. Jim Hayes, he have an input in that too. Be quite a reunion between you and the cat to get back to St. Louis. Two and one. That 
slap foul and out of play. Oh, begins to throw again in the bullpen. The 2 2 in the dirt. Kyle Seeger today is fly to left, grounded out to second. Also fly to center and struck out at a costly air midway through this game. Cardinals would love to turn two and head to Kansas City. 3 2 pitch. Carpenter to second out there on the first not in time good play though by Matt Carpenter that ball was a bullet off the bat of Seager well, he was you just wonder if it might have been easier to go to first base first because the runner was kind of caught in no man didn't know if it's going to be a line drive but just a bullet you see the runner at first he had to hold up so if he would have gone to first but he probably would have turned the double play but did the right thing, get the lead man. Here's Deho Lee. First pitch, ball one. Runner goes and it's hit up the middle. Aled Miss Diaz is there, and the Cardinals Savage. The final game of this series. Six home runs hit today. 11 to 6, the final, and it's off to Kansas City. That's the type of offense we needed today. Garcia guts through it, gets his victory and everything, but what a game by the offense led by Carpenter. Outstanding. Don't forget how to hit going into Kansas City. Six home runs hit by the Cardinals today. 11 to 6, our final. 17 hits total and we have the post game show with all the news and analysis comes your way next. The Cardinals salvage a game in Seattle Rick and Keel joins me to break it all down from our Fox Sports Midwest studios at Ballpark Village. Here's what's coming up after losing a pair of one run games the cards break out the long ball six homers. We've got the highlights plus Jaime Garcia has been in shutdown mode during interleague play. Rick explains why he wasn't quite in shutdown mode today. Big win for the Cardinals. 11 to 6 the final Missouri Lottery. Cardinals Live is coming up next. hit six count them six homers today as they salvage the final game in Seattle it was Jerko and Pham going back to back in the seventh the Cardinals tie a franchise record with 13 extra base hits and they go on to rattle Seattle the final 11 to six hello everybody and welcome inside our Fox Sports Midwest studios at ballpark village for the Sunday fun day edition of Missouri Lottery Cardinals live alongside former Cardinal Rick Ankeel. Mm -hmm. I'm Jim Hayes. First two games of the series, not so much fun. Today nope. was. Oh, let's just call it a blast. No pun intended. Wham Bam, thank you, Tommy oh. Pham. He gets two. Carp gets two. Jerko, Holiday. Guess what? We talk so much about how much we do damage the seventh inning or later. We hit six home runs, five of those coming in the seventh inning or later. Second time this season, the Cards have hit six homers in a game. Only two other times in the last 15 years have they hit six homers, but the Cards got a crank in today. They sure did. What a, what a fun game to watch. I like watching offense. We always talk about that. Seattle ends up with two homers, and we come back with six. Just doing damage. We talk about it's not how far, it's how many, but some of these were how far. We were really blasting those out. Jerko gets in on the action. Tommy Pham had two today. This is one of them. He went back to back with Jerko in the seventh inning. Cardinals weren't nearly done. Eighth inning. Oh, Matt Holiday, the DH, his 14th. 
of the season. So you think, all right, that's a lot of power. But uh, the Cardinals, again, weren't done. How about uh. a second helping for Tommy Pham? Blazer. A line drive home run. And then uh, Matt Carpenter wants a double helping as well as he goes yard. Six home runs. And we mentioned the uh, 13 extra base hit. Hits has a, a franchise record. But this is the kind of power the Cardinals have, have showed all season long. Didn't really see it in the first couple of games, but this is why the Cardinals as a team feel like they're never out of any ball game because at any time that power surge can come. No doubt, and it seems like a lot of it comes in the seventh inning or later, which makes this team so dangerous. On paper, you look at that, the way the bullpens are so specialized nowadays, you would think that's impossible, but somehow they're getting it done in those pressure situations with bullpens. When you look at Seattle, we know their bullpen was thin. When you look at this whole series on paper, you would think it sets up in our favor, but we lost two. We were able to salvage that one today. Yeah, the Mariners keep their brooms in the closet. We head right back to the Emerald City. Scotty Warman catching up moments ago with Matt Carpenter, our Mid-America Chevy dealer, player of the game. Scotty? All right, Jim, we are with Matt Carpenter. Two home runs today, and you saw the new pitcher, the reliever in the sixth inning. Take us through that at bat. Um, you know, just trying to do what I always do. Uh, you know, coming into uh, the at bat, looking to... Um, you know, be patient, get a good pitch to hit, and, um, you know, was able to have a good at bat there and and uh, put a good swing on it. You came close from almost getting three home runs today. He fell short in the second. Yeah, you know, guy made a great play, um, you know, but sometimes that happens. The home runs seem to be contagious with you guys. Six home runs in the game today in the victory. Yeah, you know, guys swung the bat really well today. Um, offense is really uh, coming into its own, and, uh, you know, Tommy Pham had a great day. That was a big lift for us, so it's fun to watch. Obviously a big win for you guys, uh, suffering two tough losses on Friday and Saturday night. Yeah, you know, coming out today and getting this win uh, to finish this series on a good note, uh, definitely a good thing. As we let, let you go here, one last one. Uh, Tommy Famby mentioned him. You ever seen a guy take his hat off and do the multitasking to make that grab out there earlier today? No, that was a first for me, uh, for <laughs> sure. But um, he caught the ball, and like I said, he had a great day at the plate. Matt, great day for you. Thanks so much. All right, thank you. Guys, there's Matt Carpenter as we send it back to you. Thanks, Scotty. All right, the Cardinals wasting no time jumping on James Paxton in the first. Matt Carpenter leading off the game with a triple. The next batter, Oledmus Diaz, drills a double to right center. And the Cardinals take a one to nothing lead very early on. Top two, game now tied at one. Carpenter making a bid for his 12th homer of the year. But Franklin Gutierrez has other ideas, goes back on the ball. It's a nice grab. Great catch. Great catch. Great focus, great concentration. Nice grab. Very nice catch. Bottom of the inning, Seattle takes her first lead of the day. Sean O'Malley doubles home Deho Lee. And it's 2-1 to one Mariners. But uh, runs weren't scarce for the Cardinals in this one. Later in the inning, Base is loaded for Robinson Cano. Cano hits a sharp grounder to second. Carpenter makes the play. Garcia limiting the damage two to one after two. Mariners put up another run in the third. Nelson Cruz, solo shot. His 19th of the year. Boy, he's got power. And it's three to one Seattle. Top five, Matt Holiday would get one back for the Cardinals. Gets the double to left. Diaz scores easily. RBI. Number 43 for Holiday, who is uh, coming on offensively, makes it three to two. Next batter up is Stephen Piscotti, a cue shot over the first baseman, just age fair. Piscotti winds up at second. Holiday scores, and this game is tied at three apiece. The hip parade continues with Brandon Moss. He laces one down the line and into the corner and just keeps running. Look at his speed. Speedy Moss with his second triple of the year. 4-3 Cardinals. They add on another run on an error. 5-3 midway through five. In the sixth, Carpenter hits one that uh, no Seattle outfielder is going to catch. Carp a solo shot. His 12th of the year. Makes it 6-3. Carp's second career game with a triple and a home run. That is if you're scoring at home. But in the bottom of the inning, two on. Kevin Segris enters the game, replacing Jaime Garcia and surrenders a game-time three-run homer. Gutierrez is ninth of the year, and suddenly it's tied at six. We move to the top of the seven. 
And that's when the uh, long ball power Vince really kicks in. in. Yeah, look, he Jet hangs his curveball. He hangs. he hangs his curveball to him. Up comes Tommy Pham. He thinks, you know what? I hung that. I think I can throw a better one. Tommy look. Pham stays tight. He throws the curveball on the outer black. He stays tight, gets him one, two. So the uh, law firm of Jerko and Pham, back to backers, Cardinals on top, eight to six. Bottom of the inning, Chris Iannetta trying to tie it up, hits one to deep center. Tommy Pham removes the cap, shields his eyes with it, and makes the catch. What a, what a That's catch. solid, right? That's beautiful. You got to make adjustments <clears throat> on the fly. He it must have been a tight, tough son right there. He pulls off his hat because his hand wouldn't have worked and gets it done. Top eight, Matt Holliday. Boom. Boom. His 14th, and this made it nine to six. And uh, there's more yet to come. Yeah. Holiday joins the home run parade. Then uh, later on, Tommy Pham, his second. And uh, not to be outdone, Matt Carpenter would like to double his home run <laughs> pleasure. And he gets his second. That made it 11 to 6. And that would be your final score. Cardinals win 11 to 6. They get out of Dodge with a win. And for the Cardinals, didn't want to get swe uh, swept in Seattle, especially heading to uh, Kansas City. That's, you know, always a tough series in Kansas City. Two games there, then two games with the Royals in St. Louis, and the Cardinals get it done. 11 to 6, they win. Tommy Pham, his second career multi-homer game. Again, kind of impressive. Second time this season, the Cardinals have hit six home runs in a game over the past 15 years prior. They'd only done it two times, so that says a lot about uh, the power that this team has. That's doing damage, and as we mentioned again, five of those in the seventh inning or later. Bullpens in the National League, American League, watch out when the birds come to town. Let's get back to the broadcast booth in Seattle and the guys who called today's game, Danny Mack and Al Roboski standing by with some final thoughts. Gentlemen. Well, the Cardinals salvage a game in this series with 17 hits, 13 extra base hits, six home runs, a lot of offense provided by Matt Carpenter. Well, Matt Carpenter got things started. Remember, he hit a triple the first time up. And then in the second inning, he thought he was going to get a home run. But Gutierrez, very good outfielder, goes back. And debatable whether that would have gone over the wall or not. But it would have been an extra base hit. So denied in the second. But in the sixth inning, he does get his first home run. Hits this one, and then he wasn't through. In the ninth, he gets another home run. Those are two of the six Cardinal home runs today. What a convincing fashion. They win this ball game and now go on to take on the world champion, Kansas City Royals. Should be fun the next four games. 6.30 on the air tomorrow. It'll be Danny Duffy and Adam Wainwright. Hope you join us as we send it back to you. As we head to break, all six Cardinal homers in condensed form. This is a thing of beauty. Sit back and enjoy. Oh. Six Cardinal homers. Sexy. BTF. Cardinals Live is brought to you by the Missouri Lottery. Every ticket you play gives back to schools across Missouri. So play it forward with the Missouri Lottery. Are you kidding me? The Cardinals are one of the best hitting teams in baseball when facing the fastball hitting 326 against a fastball. So, Rick, they face Paxton today, a fastball pitcher, a very good fastball, but the Cardinals are ready, and they jumped on the on the Paxton fastball early. Yeah, they did. Here we see in the first inning, they get three, Four two pitch. pitch on Paxton fastball. Let's take a look at him here. Carp with the first one, Diaz with the second, drives it to right center. Oh, that ball's flying for us today. Here we go, his long base hit up the middle. Nice to see him going that way. And Fryer with a base hit. Broken bat, but he sends it through there nicely. Paxton would adjust and uh, went from fastball to cutter. Had better success with it. Right? Yeah, he did. He adjusted. He, he gets five outs on the cutter. The first one there was hit pretty hard by Carpenter there. A good catch by Gutierrez. But here's Diaz taking it. Didn't get a good look at it. And if you watch this pitch, this is a nasty pitch. I mean, he throws from that three-quarter three angle now. That coming down, and then it's almost like a slider, but at 89 miles an hour, that's tough. Wong flying out to shallow center. Weak contact there. It's a good pitch. That's a tough at bat for him. Fryer there with the same thing. It's like a slider the way it's coming down. Our Don Brown deal is the Cardinals' fifth inning, and they kind of ambush. Him. Yeah, this time he tries to mix it up. We've already dialed in our sights. We're hitting both. We hit the fastball. We hit the cutter. 
Extra base hits all over. Four, eight batters face in that inning. Four hits for us, all extra base hits. So at this point, double, 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 then uh, double, 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 then triple. And the triple by this, the speedy Moss. The and Speedy uh, Moss. He does it all. And the Cardinal offense was uh, was feasting today. Yeah, it was. Here he goes. He could have stopped the second, made it a lot of doubles. But oh, you wanted to see double, 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 double. But you know what? When you got that kind of speed, and in that, and in the score of that game, he has to go to third. Fun to see the uh, bats come alive. And again, we we talked about it early, but uh, this team has the kind of lineup that uh, even. Even in a series where they're shut down for a couple of games, at some point, you know, they're they're going to break out. Yeah, no, definitely. You know, I mean, we talked about this before in spring training. We all thought it was going to be the pitching again, but the offense has been a pleasant surprise, more than a pleasant surprise, and I, and I think it surprised everyone. The uh, power production is somewhat startling. The Cardinals win the series finale in Seattle. Let's head inside the visiting manager's office at Safeco Field for Mike Matheny's postgame thoughts brought to you by the Sheet Metal Workers Local 36. Here's Mike Dup. Yeah, nice to see the power show up. And, uh, you know, Jaime did what he had to, to to stay in the game, keep us in it. And um, thought, he, thought he got better as he went. But, um, you know, bullpen came in and, and helped out. But, you know, this was a story about the offense, and we were hoping we'd see it, and happy we did. And you've done, I think it's 27 multi-home run games. It's, like, contagious. Once one guy does it, it's just a trickle-down effect. You know, it's uh, just fun to watch, and you know, like you said, different guys doing it too. You're watching Tommy have a big day. Carp almost had three, um, just really uh, making nice passes at the ball, and uh, Holly and, and Jed. I mean, all the way around, just um, you know, good to see other guys do it. So you don't just throw it on one person's shoulders. Have you ever seen a guy take his cap off? to try to make a catch out in the upfield. Like that's that's old school. Yeah, that's pre-sunglass days, I think. But um, <laughs> that was a big spot, you know, right after we, um, you know, we, we, we give up the lead and to get to a spot where it looks like they, they might have got it enough to bring it right back to tie it. It seemed like it was going to be one of those days, but uh, Tommy did a nice job getting underneath of it and using his equipment. <laughs> he got the call over turn two, Mike. Was that, was that pivotal at least early on in today's game? Yeah, I think so. Um, anytime you put a guy at third base right there in that situation, whether it's two outs or not, um, changes the complexity. And you have a guy like Jaime that's bouncing a lot of balls. Eric Fryer did a great job of uh, keeping the ball in front of him. But you know, putting a guy on third even with two is, uh, is a situation where Jaime might not be able to make his best pitches. So uh, nice play by Eric all the way around. Back to Eric. Yeah, it was definitely trending in their direction. Um, no, just a you know, just a shame that uh, couldn't hold on to that for Jaime and um, got to a spot where yeah, they uh, you know, they made they made the most of their opportunity and it, it definitely did shift the momentum and the fact that uh, we needed to do something offensively and uh, the guys responded very well. Nice to see you know, Jed be able to use the big part of the field and that's a long ways he hit it and uh, Tommy both of those. Second one was a laser. How different does this feel? I mean, compared to years past, we've talked a lot about the close games and how it's almost like you have to put three hits together to yeah. rally like that. We've had a lot of those here lately, too. I mean, we've had as many one-run games over the last probably 10 days as anybody in baseball, I would venture to say. And um, we're going to have periods like that. But when uh, you have a relentless offense, um, you know, that's just a, it's a great trait to have, whether you're deploying it right then or not. Just knowing that you have that in your bag, um, I think just changes the whole dynamic of our club. Oh, was getting ready to close today? I would have been in there, yeah, until it got to five. Yeah. At four, it was going to be oh, and at five, um, thought we'd give Bowman an opportunity and then uh, still have oh, a little fresher for tomorrow. throughout this series. I mean, whether it's the walk on Friday night, three doubles today, yesterday, had a key hit, and we'll let the one loss record might mask it all the a tremendous series. Yeah, and I think he's just been playing very consistently. I think at the beginning of this month, we saw a little lull. Um, still figuring out a way to, to get a hit or get a nice, uh, put a quality at bat together to get a walk. Um, 
but now he's driving the ball again. And you know, you just watch how the ball's jumping off his bat. It's kind of odd. You, you see outfielders taking some strange routes. The ball he hit the right center today. The ball just kept carrying. Uh, the home run he hit the other day, same thing. Um, just he, he's in a good spot. Try to keep him there. Best that Matt Carpenter's had. Have you seen a streak like this from him before? Yeah, it's that baby. It yeah, that's what it is. Okay. Yeah, Kenley brought some good things to his his psyche for sure, and his swing looks pretty. And some of the loudest, loudest hits, um, balls just jumping for him, and uh, love the way he's going about it. Not a ballpark. Pretty sure Mike Matheny had a beard pregame. Two homers by Tommy Pham, but his eye shading technique may have stolen the show today. More coming up. Missouri Lottery Cardinals Live is brought to you by Menards. Save big money at Menards on all your home improvement needs. And by your local Volkswagen dealer. Yadier Molina, best defensive catcher in baseball. Thing about Yadi is he works, he starts. Okay, so Yadier Molina, 66 starts. Not, not even, it's not even close. No, it's not. It's, it's amazing how much this guy plays. And Eric Fryer, on the other hand, doesn't get many opportunities, but a lot more. But uh, you couldn't ask more. I mean, no. a lot more than people would expect from him. His numbers are good. His defense is good. Everyone raves about his work ethic. And, and today, he got a start, and uh, he did some good things. I mean, he is making the most out of his opportunities. He's in 368. His OBP is over 400. This guy's playing defense, threw a guy out of third today. I mean, he's, he's having a great season. He's been a great addition to this ball club. It'll be a tough call when between him or Brian Pena. Yeah, I mean, that uh, we're getting word that uh, Pena may be close to returning to the Cardinals. That could happen when the Cardinals are in Kansas City. We don't know yet, but right. certainly... Eric Fryer has done everything the Cardinals have asked of him and a lot more. But uh, Brian Payne is a guy that they know can hit at the major league level. They would like to bring him back. So whether or not that happens sooner than later, we'll have to wait and see. But it, it looks that way. Let's talk about Aledmus Diaz because okay. you talk about a road trip. This kid has been outstanding. And I know every time we're watching the game, sitting there and, and, and watching what unfolds before us, you're just raving about this guy. He's just fun to watch. Yeah, three doubles today, three for five, three doubles in a walk, an RBI, a run. The most impressive thing that we've been talking about is his ability to go deep into those counts, eight pitch bat at bats, 11 pitch at bats. I mean, he, as a rookie, that is so impressive to be able to get deep in there like that and stay calm and be able to be successful in those situations. And a uh, pretty good road trip if you look at the number six games, 10 hits, 10 for 22, 455 batting average, five extra base hits, eight RBIs, and six walks. And then, and we talked about this too, not, not just the, uh, the production, but but the at-bats because he's going deep into counts and we saw that in Chicago with Arietta. Yep. Made him work. You know, long at bat, all of a sudden, area, his pitch counts up. He has to come out of the game. There's other ways to contribute. Yeah, you would expect this from a veteran, but this guy's a rookie. We talked about this before. I think playing in Cuba has played a big role in that. That's a really talented league down there. He comes here. He fits in nicely, and he's able to get those things done. I'm very impressed with him, and I know Cuba is, too. They're a proud people. They have a lot to be proud of with him. We got plenty more to get to, including sound from this guy, Tommy Pham. Gotta go, gotta go, gotta go to hell. Take the Redbirds with you anywhere using the Fox Sports Go app on your phone or tablet. The 2-1. Driven out to right center. That's well hit. Martin can't get to it. One hops over the wall. Brown rule double. Aled Miss Diaz in a 1 0 St. Louis lead. The 1 2. Diaz is running, and that's a base hit out to left field. Down into the corner. Diaz can walk home. And it is a fair ball. Just inside the line. Off the bat of Piscotti. Holiday scores, and this game is tied. Back to back to back doubles for the Cardinals. Moss rips it into right field. Extra 
extra bases there. Piscotti will score. Brandon Moss on his way to third. Moss standing up with a triple. Cardinals have the lead, and it's 4-3. to three. Hit to third, and an error on Seager. His seventh of the year, his second in this series, and a run scores to make it 5-3 to three Cardinals. Strikeouts. Carpenter, a high drive into deep right field. Gutierrez won't get this one. Matt Carpenter, his 12th home run. Adds to the Cardinal lead. 43 home runs hit today in Major League Baseball. 43. And Jerko may add to it. Out to center. It is gone. Over the wall in center field. Jed Jerko, his seventh of the year. He did. And Hold that's well hit. Out to right field. Did they go back to back? Yes. Home run Tommy Pham. First of the year. Back to back solo shots. Jed Jerko. Tommy Pham. Two run lead. St. Louis. 3 2 pitch. And Holiday hits it a ton. Center field. Track. Wall. It's another one. Holiday goes deep. The Cardinals with four home runs this afternoon and that's well hit down the left field line and it's gone Tommy Pham his second home run of the day that's five home runs hit for the Cardinals today that's well hit deep right it is gone six of them today for the Cardinals the second for Matt Carpenter a long And some bird seeds for your enjoyment. Matt Carpenter, number 65, career home run number 65, ties red for 38th most in Cardinal history. The Cardinals with six homers, four doubles, and two triples in the game for second time in franchise history. And uh, big boy stuff. Matt Holiday, home run today, 150th as a Cardinal, 12th most in franchise history. Tommy Pham had a couple of homers. Let's head. Let's head back to Seattle and hear from Tommy Pham. It feels good, you know, um, to finally be able to, you know, have a couple good at-bats today um, in comparison to what I've been doing. feels good. It's good to get a win for the team. Right. Yeah, that, that as well. You know, we've had uh, some tough luck lately. Um, but, I mean, whenever you can win, especially on a travel day, you know, happy flight. Luck's been uh, with this team for a little bit, just come back up. Contagious. Um, it seems like that uh, on this team, um, you know, they come in bunches. It seems like so. I'm, I'm just glad to be a part of it. All right, take us through the catch where you took your head. Um, you know, earlier this year in AAA, I actually had a ball hit me. Um, same exact play where I was going to my right in the sun. And um, when the ball came down, it came down in the sun. So I didn't want that to happen again. So I, instead of using my glove, I used my hat. And um, Wayno said he hasn't seen it since high school. So I'm glad I can impress Wayno. Where did it hit you? Where did the ball hit you? Um, it actually hit my glove. Like, I didn't see it. It was coming down. And it just went hit my glove. So, so you think you might do it again then with the, the hat? I just didn't want it to happen again. So I used the hat instead of my glove. First time, so I mean, they tell us in spring training, you know, there's many ways, and that's one of them. So I, I used it today, and it's it's a big thing. So I <laughs> I didn't think it would get this much attention. Three-one pitch driven out to center field. Fowler going back. He'll look up. This game is tied. Peralta puts it in play. A little squibber hit to second, and the throw is wide, and the Cardinals win. Borges scores. That's the ITD milestone. One year ago today, Cardinals with a dramatic win over the Cubs at Bush. Greg Garcia with a game-time pinch hit home run in the eighth. In the tenth, Johnny Peralta puts the ball in play. Cubs can't get anyone out. Peter Borges scores the game-winning run. Cards take it 3-2. to two. At that point, the Redbirds held an eight-game lead 
in the division over Chicago. How about the Cubs today? Cubs at the Marlins, and they ran into some very, very good pitching. Jose Fernandez dominating seven innings, one run ball today. He struck out 13. He was sharp. Marlins win it. The final six to one. The Cubs have now lost six of seven. So the updating, updated standings look like this. Cards nine back of the Cubs and uh, Pittsburgh, Milwaukee, Cincinnati all kind of floundering around. But lots of time to play if you want to make a move on the Cubs. Right now the Cubs taking on some water, losing six to seven. Absolutely. We've been playing we've been playing well. I like what we're doing. The pitching has been good with all the quality starts. The offense came alive today. Let's hope we can go into KC, eat some of their barbecue at home, <laughs> and take them for their papers. Yeah, I'm with that. Cards do their part. They win today. The final tally, 11 to 6. When we come back, we'll hear from Jaime. Stay with us.